not really the type of news that uh, I would like to talk about today, but um, looks like my plans of uh, coming on here to, to do a regular show or to do a show that I wanted to do um, two days in a row have been foiled once again by this is unimaginable, really, at this point. The amount of loss, um, Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda is, or was the, is the age of my wife at 36. There's been a lot of back and forth on what's going on with him and, and where he's been. Um, just want to quickly say that I, I literally saw this news immediately. I, I was, I was, I, I usually am told things like this are happening by many people as they happen. This was one of the first times I was scrolling on my Twitter feed regular and I saw a tweet by, I saw a tweet and I wasn't even reading who it was by and it, and it was by Triple H, but I didn't know it was Triple H. I just saw a tweet by Triple H, by t- a tweet, and I was like, well, okay, so what is someone joking about Bray Wyatt? This is sick. You know, this is a sick thing to say. And as I got halfway done reading the tweet, I then looked up to see it was Triple H's Twitter, and I went, oh, this is real. Let me read more. And so I read more, and then I, I realized... Oh my God, I thought it was going to be, I thought it was a tweet about one of the Rotundas retiring or having to retire or leaving or taking a leave of absence or that they would be, that there was news about something. I, I didn't expect it to be really terrible news. And then I realized that the tweet had been made one minute ago as I looked at the literal live tweet from Triple H and it's, it said a minute ago. Now it's been 16 minutes now, but it had been a minute ago. And I, I, I just couldn't believe that I was getting that information. Th- like one of the immediate people to see this information and, and it wasn't processing in my, my brain correctly. You know, like it wasn't hitting me the right way. Cause it was just like, but at the same time, I understand that there's been lots of things with Bray Wyatt and he's coming back and he's not coming back and something's going on. And I know that there's been concern issues. And then we had heard that, you know, Bray Wyatt was dealing with potentially a real issue or a sickness of some kind. Um, But we thought, we thought that was a an an issue with something else. Maybe he was going through something, you know, mental is what a lot of people thought. Uh, and maybe that I don't know what's going on, so I, I can't tell you what's happening yet. I just remember he I thought he was dealing with something and honestly the hope at the time well, let's read the tweet from let's let's read the tweet from Triple H first. My light, my stuff is all jacked up in here because I didn't, I didn't expect to be going live for an hour, and um, everything else. So let's read the tweet from Twi- uh, Triple H. Just received a call from WWE Hall of Famer Mike Rotunda, IRS, who informed us of the tragic news that our WWE family member for life, Wyndham Rotunda, also Bray Wyatt unexpectedly passed earlier today our thoughts are with his family and we ask that everyone respect their privacy at this time I mean Um, it's crazy to me that, that, uh, this is going to be real hard for a lot of people. Cause like, this is one of those things where like people don't know what's going on or why, or what the thing is. And people aren't going to be able to let it go until they know. 
you know, they're going to be searching for answers on this one for a while. So this just came out from Triple H via Twitter. There was speculation, like I said. There had been speculation that he had been sick with something. Um, but again, there was also people that thought, well, no, he, he's dealing with some with something mental. It's not, it's not something where he's really sick or there's something going on like that. It's, it's something he's dealing with, and that's what the problem is, and he'll be back when he squares it all away, which is basically what I took to be the truth. I took that to be the truth. I was like, okay, he's gonna, he needs some time to figure it out. And, you know, we've all been through so much craziness and everybody's got problems kind of everywhere right now with, uh, their mentality and what's going on. And with some of the ways things have gone down with wrestling for him. So he'll be back and he's just, you know, figuring it out. And that's kind of the way I took it. And so when they said that he was dealing with some kind of a serious illness or in some kind of an illness, that was a rumor. I took it as, okay, it's the, it's the same thing as, you know, the stuff he was going through before he's dealing with stuff in his head, you know, and, and that that's tough to deal with. And he's going to need to get that right and take some time. But now I don't know if that's what it is. Now I don't know if that's what he was dealing with. I don't know if he was dealing with something else and it's private. So, We've been speculating on this for months, but didn't know it was going to go this way. You know, like we didn't know it was going to go this way. But this is the be this is the best, you know, news that we have. This is the all we have as far as reports and news is is what we've been reading over the past months that, you know, and people thought he was cleared a few months back. And we realized he wasn't. We thought he was, and then he wasn't. And now I don't know. I can't tell you. Is it? I don't know which. What the answer is? Does this mean he's been dealing with something we didn't know? He's been dealing with some kind of life-threatening issue that none of us knew this whole time. So, apparently, that could be the case. You know, that, that could be what the case is, that he's been dealing with something, but I don't know. All I can tell you, man, is this this is terribly sad. Like, it's, it's, it's so terribly sad and awful because this guy's younger than me, you know? It, it's, it's like Brody Lee, Brody Lee, um, Luke Harper, Brody Lee, um, John Huber. It's like these guys... He, he caught something crazy that, that was super rare and crazy that ended up killing him. And I don't know what exactly has uh, people are going to speculate about whether it was I, I that the, the only reason why I'm upset about that part of it is because if it's I don't know what it is, but if it's something that he did, people are going to speculate that. And it's going to happen in the wrestling community and in the regular world and community when somebody, this happens. You know, people are going to start really speculating about what happened. And because they didn't say what happened and we didn't know what was going on, uh, it's just going to add to that. You know, um, but it, it, it did come out on August 11th. This is this tells me that this might be something actually wrong, like actually a medical condition. I I really do think myself I, that maybe this was a medical condition because we had been hearing rumors for weeks that he'd been dealing with something, and in fact the quote is this: WWE star Bray Wyatt nearing return after battling a life-threatening illness. Like, WWE star Bray Wyatt, this is August 11th, August 11th, WWE star Bray Wyatt nearing a return after battling life-threatening illness with the fiend medically cleared to wrestle again after seven months out 
Bray Wyatt is reportedly nearing a return to WWE seven months since his last appearance at overcoming after overcoming a life threatening illness away from the sport. So I want to reiterate that because a lot of people, even myself at the time or a while ago, I heard this news early August. I heard this news early August and I sort of made a comment about it. And then a little while later, I mentioned it again. The second time I mentioned it, I mentioned it vaguely and said, well, we'll see what happens. I don't know what's going on. What is this illness? We still don't know. A week before that, I had made comments that I, I thought it was something that was going on, you know, in his head and he was dealing with emotional something. And I, I kind of downplayed it that, no, I, I you know, I, I think they're making that up. I think he's just dealing with something else and, you know, he'll he'll be back when he gets his head straight. And then it was a week later, August 11th, that that was officially quoted by many people and we sort of breezed over it. A lot of people did, but I really did. I really breezed over it quite a bit. I I breezed over it a lot, man. I I I I didn't for I I never thought for once because you don't think that. I never thought for once that it was that he was really dealing with a life-threatening illness. I thought, no, this is, you know, he's getting his head together. They're trying to figure out something. And then when they came out with that news, I sort of just went, okay, maybe he is. And we, we really, I mean, go look it up. I, I did, did many people talk about it for a long time? I feel like almost nobody was talking about it enough. And I don't think I was no, talking, is- I don't think I was talking about it enough. But Triple H tweeting out 25 minutes ago or so that he really is dead. He's really passed away. IRS, his father, reached out to Triple H and told him. This is obviously something the WWE has known about for a while, and I don't think it is related to mental illness. A lot of people said it was the mental illness thing. I thought that at first, too. I did, too. And this is... If if, if it is what a life-threatening illness that, that this ended up being because of, it's insanely reminiscent of uh, Brody Lee, Luke Harper, Brian Huber. I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds of this? Like, I just, what? We don't know what it was, though. We don't know what it was, but we know that was reported. I'm going to read the chat in a minute. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just a little bit. Um, I'm just a little bit shocked here. Bray Wyatt, life-threatening illness. WWE. Um, let's hear from. Um, I mean, we've heard from a few people. We've heard from a few things. Let's listen to it uh, here. Maybe these guys will know. Illinois, where he defeated L.A. Knight in a Lights Out street fight. Wyatt appeared on WWE television for the final time on the February 27th Monday Night Raw in a pre-recorded segment. The former world champion was supposed to have a match against Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania 39. That was where everything changed. He was supposed to have a match. It was a WrestleMania. And that was when he took his uh, right. He began the seven month leave. However, Bray Wyatt was pulled from the show due to undisclosed health issues. As of now, we thought he got hurt. You know, we thought there was an injury. We thought there was something like that. Then it was people reporting, you know, it was a mental thing. Wyatt has been listed internally as a wrestler who dealing with a long-term illness. Fightful Select reported that Bray Wyatt is close to being medically cleared. Fightful added that WWE is very careful about Wyatt's health condition. A source told Fightful that a creative idea has been pitched to Wyatt for September. Fightful has learned that Bray Wyatt is finally getting closer to clearance after almost six months without it. Wyatt has battled an illness that we won't disclose, and the company and Wyatt have been taking extra precautions to make sure that his long-term health is accounted for. Of late, we've confirmed that Wyatt isn't actively cleared, but those we've spoken to claim that he's getting closer, and that there have been some creative ideas presented. One source indicated that some ideas were even mentioned for September, however that won't mean anything if he doesn't get that clearance. In an update, 
Sean Ross of Fightful tweeted that Bray Wyatt is recovering from a career and life-threatening illness. After today's update, it was explained to Fightful that the illness that Bray Wyatt is actively recovering from was both career and life-threatening. It's great to hear that things are looking much better. So that was that was about that was about a couple of weeks ago. So it's crazy to me. It's by the way, um, I don't know, man. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Yo, ads, how you doing, man? How you doing today, ads? Good to see you, man. Hey, Casey is raw. TMZ just reported on Bray Wyatt as well. Mets champion, how are you, my friend? Uh, Johnny, thank you for stopping by and hitting the like button and all the. Uh, when you hit, you always are hitting the like button. I appreciate you giving me the likes, man. Give Bray Wyatt a like, I guess tonight. This is, I am, I don't even know how to deal with do this. Like I've done, we've, I, I yesterday I was going live, and I had to reset everything because Terry Funk passed away, you know. But I mean Terry Funk, I you don't want to say you were ready for that, but I mean you you know what I mean. You understand, you know Terry Funk being 80 almost, you know, and whatever, but this, you don't, this is not, I, and plus hearing for weeks that right, right as you really are finding out that Bray Wyatt had just dealt with a life threatening illness, you just found out that truth. You had just found out that this guy was dealing with a life threatening illness and that's what was going on. And that was kind of shocking. Like, Oh my God, this guy was, he could have died just like Brody Lee and Luke Harper. He could have died, and and you're just finding this out, and then you find out that he beat it, that he's gonna he's gonna be coming back soon because oh by the way you know the last seven months he was he wasn't just injured he was dealing with a life threatening illness but it's okay because he's coming back that's the news oh wow okay so he must be coming back because they're finally ready to say that that is crazy because everyone else was speculating that it was some other kind of issue. You know, that it was creative differences or mental something or whatever the case is. And then you find out, no, it's he's dealing with it with a life threatening issue. And and, and then, you know, two weeks after that happens, after you find that out in a week after you get a little more information last week. You find out he dies. He passes away. Why? What the hell has done this to a guy who's 36 years old, the age of my wife, younger than me? You know, Luke Harper, Brody Lee, what, you know what I mean? It was shocking when that happened. This is this. It's happening again. I mean, with with Brody, man, he had a very rare, bizarre thing that went on. And this is that way as well. I don't know, man. It's an illness. That's what they're saying. I don't we don't know. Nobody knows what the illness is. Is it hard? Yeah, I mean, we don't know. Is it uh, there's going to be people running just wild with different speculations and different things? I did not expect to be covering this. I expected to be going live. I expected to be coming to you guys live tonight to talk about some of the WWE stuff all in and probably some other crazy crap and have a good time with you guys, have some fun. I did not expect to be doing this. I'm on a little bit earlier than I expected, and obviously, this is devastatingly ridiculous news that it's hard to even believe it yet. It's not even... We've covered so many people that have died, wrestlers that have died on this show, and in our lives we've seen it, and anybody passing away, that this sucks, bro. This just sucks ass. Like, this just sucks ass. It's not fun. It's not good. And um, again, like I said, Triple H, I happened to catch Triple H's tweet the minute he tweeted it out. And I can't believe it. The The Twitter feeds are just 
showered with this. I mean, it's really, really, really hard to believe that this is true. So he's out for seven months. We don't know why he's out for seven months. People think it's a it's a, create, a creative thing. It's something else. It's Maybe it's an injury. Only to find out that the entire time he's been out, he's been dealing with something life threatening. But but yet two but where did the news come from that two weeks ago he had beaten a life threatening illness? And then it's so confusing and frustrating. Seven months he's gone. And then two weeks ago we find out that he wasn't just gone, he was gone dealing with a life threatening injury or life threatening sickness, but he's coming back. He beat it. He didn't want to tell any of you guys about it. He didn't want anybody to know about it. Kept it private. Didn't want anybody to worry. Didn't want to have that be, you know, out there in the public. Seven months living with it himself, dealing with it himself, and then beating it, according to the news two weeks ago. Only to find out that right after that, now he's gone. I don't really know if we should be playing donations right now people are donating money i mean i don't i don't know i feel weird about that but that's okay that happens all the time and uh on these shows you know but it's just weird you don't have to right now i'm not gonna mention it but um i just think that uh I just think it's wild that, you know, it's very sad if that's true that he kept it to himself that he was sick for seven months. And then, you know, we got all this news that he was coming back and he like soon and that he'd beaten a life threatening illness and now he's dead. Why would he die after he beat the life threatening illness? Did it come back? Did something go wrong? We don't know what happened. We don't know what it is. We don't know if it was. We don't know anything. And so it makes it that much crazier. I know that sounds, I know that it can be selfish for people, like, and you're going to have people speculating. Well, did he have cancer? Did he have a heart thing? Did he have a, did he, was it the vaccination? Was it, uh, you know, mental? Did he do it to himself? Well, not, not if he had a, he had a life threat. They wouldn't say he had a life threatening illness for seven months if it was something like that. It would be a life threatening illness for seven months, which usually something like that is, you know, a cancer or something that they found or somebody found or somebody had to go through. But why would you get better and then it happened? Um, did he take a bad dose? I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, I just don't know right now. Nobody knows. And we're not going to know until they tell us. No one's going to know until they, if they want to tell us or when they tell us. Uh, we're not going to know. Um, William Belcher, I honestly don't know what to say these days. He probably been dead for those seven months and they're just now telling everybody. No, I, you know, I don't think, um, you know, I don't think that would be the case. I mean, that was, that was the case with, um, who did that happen to? Not that long ago, we lost somebody. It was terrible, and he had been—he had actually been um, dead for a while. Was it? Um, New was it New Jack? I think that maybe it was New Jack, or was it New? It was somebody. Somebody will remember in the chat. It wasn't New Jack. It was somebody. Did he take the poison jab? I don't know. We don't know about that. We don't know any. I, I and I don't know why you'd be out for seven months with that. A rem remission is a thing, says Tall Order. I mean, that that's true. Kobe, Virgil. No, it's not Kobe. Uh, I am wearing the Black Panther shirt, though. Um, uh, MF Doom, yeah. You know, it wasn't. Oh, it was MF Doom. Hunter. Hunter Dvorak. You're right. It wasn't a wrestler. It was MF Doom. You are right. I'm sorry. That is what happened. It was MF Doom that died, and, we, and they were like, oh, he's been dead for like four months or something. That was crazy. Yes, I remember that. You're right. It was MF Doom. You guys are right. He's 36 years old, man. Bray Wyatt is thir was 36 years old. 36 years old, Bray Wyatt. That's my wife's age. It's unfathomable, just like Luke Harper, Brody Lee. I mean, it's just... 
insanely ridiculous. Yeah, it was MF Doom, man. I don't know. We don't know anything about what it was, but we know that the reason why he was gone is because he was dealing with apparently a real illness. And again, like I said, I thought it was a... We thought it was... It's it's sad, man. We thought it was a mental thing. We thought it was a mental situation, a mental illness or, or of some kind of thing like that. We didn't think it was something that was a real illness that could that could kill him like this. Like we didn't expect if that's we still don't really know, but I'm guessing that because what else could it be then? And I don't know. And we're going to this is unbelievably sad, unbelievably shocking. Man. I am gut gut punch blown away. I am Bray Wyatt. I can't believe Wyndham Rotunda is dead. I cannot believe this. And the way it's happened. I feel terrible for everybody, his family, JoJo, all those, all the people in the company, his friends everywhere. I mean, I you can't even... What type of devastation is going through that locker room and with the people that knew him? Man... I just cannot get, we'll never be, I mean, this will just never, this is bizarre. Um, Brody Lee and Bray Wyatt. Two, I mean, we, we should have been talking about these guys for years. We should have been talking about these guys for years to come. There could have been a, a reunion in WWE. Brody was so good when he went to AEW and, um, Bray Wyatt had so many ideas that they were like almost uncontrollably running wild all over his head about what to do with the fiend and this, that, and the other thing. And the guy's creative mind was just buzzing. And, you know, he, he had such a big comeback when he came back the last time. Um, it always felt like he came, he, it's, it always felt like he came back with another amazingly crazy creative idea. And then as the idea spiraled and floated away, he'd go away for a little while. And then he would come back again, almost re relaunched, and the excitement was back again so many times. That's what happened with Bray Wyatt. And so you were thinking, okay, what's he going to do now when he comes back again? You know, where are they going to go? Are they going to pick up where they left off before? Or are they going to go, you know, is there something... There's got to be something new probably that happens. And Triple H, again, like I said, tweeted out this information a minute. I saw it within a minute. I was hoping for more news, but we, uh, you know, we don't know the facts. And now we're not going to know anything beyond, I would think, what Triple H said here for a while. Which was, again, as we said, um, uh, Triple H uh, just received a call from WWE Hall of Famer Mike Rotunda, who informed us of the tragic news that our WWE family member for life, Wyndham Rotunda, also known as Bray Wyatt, unexpectedly passed away earlier today. Our thoughts are with his family, and we ask... Uh, that everyone respect the privacy at this time. So, that is that is uh, what Triple H said. That is the that is how everybody has found out this news about Bray Wyatt apparently passing away after. All the, and yeah, I will play the donations a little bit later, guys. I see, I see everybody is uh, saying things. I will play things. I will take. Uh, I will probably take phone calls in a few minutes, um, and we'll get to uh, doing more of the show. But this is obviously gonna 
you know, kind of take over everything at this point for a bit. Because this is unbelievable. Like, it's just unbelievable news. We thought he was on his way back after finding out shocking news that the guy had been dealing with a life-threatening issue. And that was shocking enough. That was that was shocking when I heard it. But I I had believed that some of it wasn't true and that, you know, this was stuff that was being put out there and it wasn't we didn't really know exactly what was going on because it was so vague. I thought the news was very vague that I, I didn't really talk about it that much. We we mentioned it, but not much. And I chalked it up to, oh, they're just resetting the, you know, the button. You know, maybe he's hurt, he hurt his leg or something. We didn't know. But life-threatening, serious illness. But then two weeks later, he's he's now dead. And the only difference with, you know, Brody Lee and Luke Harper in that situation was he got an undisclosed injury we heard. We knew that Brody, uh, Luke Harper, Brody, Justin, uh, Jonathan Hubert, he was dealing with something that was putting him in the hospital of some kind of an injury, we thought. And he just never came back. He was still gone and still gone. And we're like, okay, he's injured with something and we don't know what it is. And that's when, you know, of course, then Brody Lee passed away, and we found out later it was this super rare thing in the lungs and whatever else was going on. That was crazy. But this is somewhat similar to that. The only difference here is that two weeks ago we got some kind of weird tip-off that, hey, he's coming back, and he beat a life-threatening illness, and that was shocking. But, oh, n- no, sorry, now he's he's gone. So I find that to be puzzling and bizarre and crazy sad, especially if he had... Why was it reported that he beat a life-threatening illness but now has died? And only people are just... Like, the speculations are going to run insane. It's terrible, but that's what's going to happen because people are trying to put peace together. Like, did he, you know, have some sort of... I don't know. Was he recovering? after having something done and then it didn't go right or it didn't last or, you know, I don't know. That's what happens when you don't have the information. Not that anybody deserves to know everything about somebody and whatever's happening, but, you know, that's what fans are going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to speculate on stuff. It's just you can't help it. You're not going to be able to help it. We are going to take... I am going to at times... jump into the discord and hear from people and we are going to take phone calls and you know that sort of thing um i obviously i'm caught off guard i was going live in the next 30 minutes and then as i was getting ready to come come on here live just like friggin' yesterday when terry funk passed away i was getting ready to go live with something else and then terry funk passed away now today i'm getting ready to go live and then this happens and um, so sorry, I'm I'm just a little bit I completely thrown off at this point. My mother's calling me. Um, uh, what? what's up? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, is this the Joe Cronin show? Yes, sir. What's up? Yeah, I, I, I just can't believe it, man. Um, I, 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 oh, well, that guy ended his life. That guy ended himself. He couldn't believe it so much, he took his own self. Jesus Christ. Did you guys hear that, or did I dump out of that at the end? Well, maybe we'll wait a little bit to go to the phones because that was one of the weirdest jokes I've ever heard. Did you guys even hear what he just did? I Maybe not because I dumped out of it. I thought he was going to do something crazy or something like that, so I just muted him. He did, <laughs> he did just bash his phone several times, and then 
I don't even know what that was. Okay. But anyway, yeah, um, I can't believe it either. What a psycho. So we just lost a fan now on the phone as well. So that's great. It's been a real great day, guys. We just lost a fan. Um, I think I heard his mother in the background too, which is weird because he sounded a bit older. So 339-226-6610. That's the danger when you put people on live on the air. I, I, I think we dumped out of it before he started screaming uh, the thing he screamed. Hopefully you didn't hear the thing he screamed. But um, all our, obviously, thoughts and condolences to uh, the family. You know, I can't imagine IRS, Mike Rotunda, the poor guy, I, you know, this family, like, this this guy was cherished, bro. This guy was cherished. He was wrestling royalty. He was named after legends in the business. He, he He's the son of legends in the business. Like, there's just so many things you could say about that. Um, so this is a tragedy of our century to go along with a uh, decade. I don't know. I can't even think straight. Anyway, hello, caller. We got another caller. Let's see what happens on this one. Hey, y'all. Oh, what's up, so, man? What's going on, man? I ain't going to be on here long. I just, oh, man. I'm at, I'm at a loss of words, man. Like, I'm in utter disbelief. Like, I don't even know what to say, man. I'm stunned. Like, here I go reading a report. This guy just battled overcome a life-threatening illness and ready to um, get back into action. Then I read a report 11 minutes ago that he just passed away. I really don't know what to say, man. You know, it's heartbreaking, you know. The guy was one of the most talented, most creative guys um, on that roster, man. God was just, like, larger than life. Wrestling doesn't even have that in the world. I know the guy was, you know, I know that even Triple H said, you know, sometimes he had so many ideas like they would like, you know, you had to slow it down and pick one almost or whatever. But like Triple H was great, I thought, with him at trying to hone in on those things. So, yeah, but a lot of other people just you have so many people that sometimes they just want to collect their check and go home or do whatever and go play a video game. And the one thing you can say about Bray Wyatt that it seems like or William Rotunda that you can say is. That the guy was constantly he was about the business. Yeah, he was super passionate about his character, the business, and creative ideas. No doubt, man. It's, a lot of guys, he he was just he's like all um, the guys from back in the day, you know, like guys like, you know, Stone Cold, The Rock, John Cena. You know, all those guys they were all time it was cut from that same cloth, man. He was really passionate about his about his craft. He really dedicated and invested his time in to his craft. When he did that he was captivating the entire wrestling world. The um, ratings will show it. The metrics will show it. He's the highest. He was the highest um, selling merch on the WWE shop. The guy, the guy, the guy invested his time into his character and paid off tremendously because he's he was one of the most. He's one of the best guys in that company, man. This hearing this, man, this man it really is. I really don't know what to say anymore. Yeah, man. I, it, well, I appreciate the call, bro. It's super shocking. I don't think, I, you know, when, whenever I do things like this, I have to pretend like almost it's not real, bro. I don't know what's up with me, but at the age of 39 that I am now, um, it's hard. It, like, I, I just start, I just start bawling over anything. So I have to be really careful to like pretend like it's not real or sort of put emotions to side because if not, bro, it's just like I turn into goddamn the, the river. You know what I mean? I start like just breaking apart and so um you know i i do have to like i saw i just try to remain as like like it's not say this isn't happening you know and like later on i'll think about it and be more upset but right now it's like just trying to you know figure it all out i uh i thank you uh to uh to maxine for subbing hi maxine how you doing and to everybody else who's re-upping their memberships all week Thank you for that. And uh, everybody who uh, has super chatted, I will play them in a little bit. I didn't expect to be here. If you want to say something, go ahead. That's fine. Um, I will play them afterwards. You know, we were supposed to be live with some other stuff tonight, not with the death of Bray Wyatt, with Wyndham Rotunda. Um, just incredibly sad, crazy news. 36 years old, one of the, just one of the biggest and one of the best sellers uh, uh, as far as merchandise, best creative minds ever at the, or, you know, in the company. 
And, you know, seven months of dealing with a life-threatening illness, we did not know that. Nobody knew that this guy battled some kind of life-threatening illness for seven months. And, and then to get news that, oh, you know, you, you you didn't really get to experience the sadness for him, the worry for him. We didn't get to sit here and be sad or worry about him, really. You just thought, okay, he's injured or something, or maybe he's dealing with something mentally, so he's off the roster right now. They're working on it. He'll be back at some point. No big deal. Oh, come to find out, oh, the last seven months, while you could have been worried about him, uh, you, you should have been worried because he was dealing with a life-threatening illness. But guess what? He's coming back and everything's okay, he beat a life-threatening illness. So you never had the benefit of feeling sad, feeling that worried, you know, about him. If anything, people were making jokes that there's something, oh, you know, he has these issues right now and whatever, and it's always something they can never figure it out with him. Um, and you feel that way, so you're just, you have no remorse, no real worry. It's just, yeah, this happens with him, it seems like. All right, going through another one of those periods again. They don't want him. They do want him. He doesn't know what he wants. They don't know what he, okay, whatever. Oh, no, two weeks ago we find out, oh, no, 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 no. He was fine. To He was going to keep cruising. He had that whole story going and everything. So all that misconception that, that, oh, things aren't working out or something like that, that was wrong. That's not what was going on. He literally was pulled during his run because he has a life-threatening illness. And, and, and you say, oh, my God, what? But he's coming back. He's, he's beaten it, and now he's coming back. And you're like, oh, wow, okay. So you really never get to soak in the worry soak in the fear, experience the, the any of the real feelings, like allow the real feelings to hit you and figure out what's going on, how you feel about the whole thing, and, and come to the realization of, oh my God, like that's what's going on? No, because he's already coming back and everything's all set. And so you, you're, you're, you're the emotion, the sadness, the worry, everything that you could have felt to feel the empathy or to feel um, bad for him had been taken away and robbed because I don't know why, because maybe he didn't want people to know and they wanted to keep it quiet. I mean, we heard so much about how Brody Lee and the locker room was amazing at AEW because people kept it quiet for so long. So much of that so that CM Punk said this is the best locker room he's ever heard of. It's one of the main reasons why he showed up in AEW because CM Punk heard that this news didn't get spread around and people didn't find out about the problems that were going on and, and, and whatever. And the fact that they kept it home and kept it close and kept it secret made him think, man, this locker room's worthy of this. Like, they're worthy of me. What a great place. I want to be there. Come to find out, you know, AEW's locker room now is whatever it is. But the bottom line is when somebody gets sick, they came together to adhere to those wishes. And apparently, unless I'm jumping the, jumping the gun and I've got something wrong here, that apparently has seemingly happened at, at WWE as well. Because for seven months, we didn't know that this guy was sick. And, and, and for months, people made you know comments about it's just mental or they don't want him or the creative is a mess and that sort of thing. But no, two weeks ago, we find out it's, it's a serious illness. But it's okay because he's okay and he's coming back now, according to several news reports. Okay. Wow. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll never be able to fairly process how I, that how I should have. Instead, I'll just go on and... I expected Bray Wyatt to come back and Bray Wyatt to come back and basically just to pick up where he left off. And, and we would all kind of sort of brush. Unfortunately, I think, unfortunately brush under the rug, the fact that this guy was actually almost, almost died of something and battled it for months. And we didn't know about it, but maybe Bray Wyatt wanted it that way. Maybe, um, Wyndham Rotunda wanted it that way because he felt no, I've got a character. I've got something to live up to. It will never be right if people know that I'm sitting in a hospital or I'm sick for months and months and months and people like that. It can. Ne it will never be okay for me if people experience that and go through that with me. So I can see how he would not want people to know about that because 
if they did, it could take away from his creative, his character, and things like that. So I'm just guessing. I don't know if that's true. But knowing a guy who's committed like he was, I could see him like absolutely not do I want people to know that I'm dealing with anything because I'm going to come back and be the character and we're not going to talk about how any, I was in a hospital, I was hurt, I was on death's door, none of that stuff. We're not doing that. And everybody kept it calm and quiet. But now all of a sudden, it's like a sucker punch. An absolute sucker punch to the goddamn soul when you don't know any of that stuff is going on and you don't know what's happening and then you find that out and you go, oh my God, okay, I guess, wow, I guess we, we didn't know about that. He's just, he's just coming back now from a life-threatening illness. Seems a little crazy that that's not even, that that's not bigger headlines everywhere, but it, it was for a second and people for the most part kind of brushed it off. And now two weeks later, he passes away. Incredibly sad. And you talk about, um, you know, Terry Funk the other day. I mean, this year has been weird. Terry Funk the other day, just a incredible legend. Bray Wyatt today is a tragedy. This is a super tragedy. Um, it very similar to um. Um, the Briscoe brothers situation. That was another issue. Jay Briscoe. So, and that was a car crash, obviously, but you know, again, this is, um, he was supposed to come back. He was set to come back. All you can speculate is that something went wrong. That something had to have gone wrong somehow. I don't know what he was dealing with. Nobody does. Will we find out? Potentially. I'm assuming that because this was shocking, this is, from what I understand, this happened today. You know, um, from what I gather, this happened today. And it happened earlier today because, and the phone lines are blowing up. I, I understand that. I'm going to, and I'm going to play the, the, everything. I appreciate the people that are becoming members and uh, that are donating and stuff like that. I, I will play, I will play your messages. I think people really want to say things about uh, this situation. I'll play them in a minute. Um, I, I know the stream labs link is in the description. It's down below, John. I didn't put, I didn't post it in the, in the chat cause it's weird to do that. I think, but you know, it's, we are, we're always live. It's what are you going to do? Everybody's doing it, but I get it. So I will play you. I'm sorry. I know I, you said something. And I'll read your, I'll read your chat in a second. Um, and, uh, big John bear. I'll, I'll read your big Johnny bear. I'll read yours in a second, man. I, sorry. You tweeted me. I, I got the Twitter message. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll post it in a minute. I, thanks for becoming a member too. I appreciate that. I'll play that. will play too. Don't worry. Um, I saw what you said to me on Patreon earlier. I got that as well. I appreciate it. I, I did see this in real time, though, so I didn't even need the alerts. I got so many alerts from you guys, but I didn't even need to see them because I was scrolling through Twitter the minute that Triple H tweeted this, and I just happened to catch it in the minute he tweeted it. And I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a fan. First, I thought it was a fan writing something sick, and I was like, yo, this is, this is sick. Why would you do this? And then I kept reading it, and then I was like, wait a minute. And then I, I looked and saw that it was Triple H's Twitter. Because now now when I see the blue check mark on Twitter, sometimes I don't think, like, I don't know about you guys, but when I used to see the blue check mark on Twitter, I used to be like, oh, my God, this is an official account. This is an official thing, an official report, an official name or something like that. But now that, that you know, everybody can just pay for the check mark, it's kind of thrown me off. So even when I see a blue check mark now, I don't. I, in fact, sometimes I think it's not a real person because I think well, some of the most trolly people pay for the blue check mark. I mean, I pay for the blue check mark, so you know maybe that's self reflection. But you know, so I it took me a second to I had to read the name. Do you know what I mean? Back in the day, I'd be like, oh shit, that's an official tweet. Who is this? Triple H. I didn't do that. I went, oh, it's a blue some guy just writing something terrible on Twitter. It's so stupid. Oh wait, that's really Triple H. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh shit, that's, 
actually Triple H tweeting this. And he was so he was the one to report this. And again, just received a call from WWE Hall of Famer Mike Rotunda, aka IRS. He didn't say that, but you know who IRS is. He's Bray Wyatt's father, Mike Rotunda, William Rotunda's father. Um, the tragic news, WWE family member and for life, Wyndham Rotunda, also known as Bray Wyatt, unexpectedly passed away earlier today. Our thoughts are with his family, and we ask that everybody respect their privacy at this time. So he, he passed away unexpectedly, which is like, again, if he was dealing with this, you know, sickness for seven months, a life-threatening sickness, they they expected potentially, you know, that he would, he, he could die from that, apparently, uh, was what I'm reading from that, that over the seven months, it's something that could be, that could have killed him, but then he beat it, but then suddenly died. Today, potentially, I don't know what the I don't know why, man. You can speculate all day long about it. You could say that something he battled for seven months, and the result of all the whatever had to happen to him, maybe a clot, something. You don't know. You don't know, and none of us know, and I don't know, and I'm not going to say anything. I just don't know. We that that but that's what we know. Seven months ago, he got sick with something. And two weeks ago, it was reported that he was finally coming back and that he'd beaten a life-threatening illness. Two weeks ago, reported that he beat a life-threatening illness. And I think a lot of people downplayed that, including me. Very much did I downplay this as well. But nobody knows. We don't... Nobody knows what happened... Until they tell us, we won't know. We did the same thing with uh, Brody Lee. Um, when Brody Lee passed away and we didn't know. We had no idea what was going on. And it turned out to be that he had some kind of a rare, crazy rare lung sickness, illness that like, I don't remember the numbers on whatever Brody Lee had, but it was something in the like, 20 people a year or something suffer from it it was a crazy number it was an astronomically impossible thing to catch it was like winning the lottery to catch whatever that was if I remember it's not a work people saying that it's crazy it's that's not a work that's insane to say that it's not a work trust me the optics of that would be just like, and maybe it's younger fans who are saying that, so I, I get it. You're younger, maybe you don't know or whatever. It would be destructible. It would be company destruction to to do that. Now, in the in like even in the late '90s, you know, you wouldn't really do that. They wouldn't want to do that even in the Attitude Era. But I could see that more around that time, right? And potentially they would have done those angles. The closest thing they did to that angle was, and here's the thing, I, in the Attitude Era, it is something they would have done. From 1997 to the year 2006 or something, I could see them doing it. But they didn't do it most of the time, I believe, because Owen Hart passed away for real. Um, several other people passed away for real. So that eliminated that from being done. If nobody had died or tragedy hadn't happened from 1997 to 2000, I think, yeah, they would have done an angle where somebody was certainly dead. I mean, they did an angle where Al Snow's dog was. But no, this is 100% real. I'm assuming it's a young person that wrote that, which is fine. I get it. It's wrestling. But no, this is, this is uh, sadly, it's sickly. It's real. I wish it wasn't. I wish it wasn't. Um, and then, you know, Vince McMahon did the whole thing where he blew up or whatever. And then right after that, Chris Benoit, that happened. So that's the closest they ever came, I think, to doing something like that was, you know, Vince McMahon, the limo exploding. But then the Benoit thing kind of put a damper on that whole thing. So, um, yeah. Let's hear from you guys. Uh, 
seven oh six. I lost you five seven zero. Hang on, and eight one eight's on the phone. Hello. Hey Joe. Hey, what's going on? Well, first of all, I'm so sorry to hear about Bray. You know, he was a fine young man. Yeah, he was. It's crazy how young he was. I mean, this is not it's not even settling in my brain right at this point. I'm not even it's not even real to me yet. I know. And and number two, I'm a sixty eight year old widow and I enjoy your show and thanks for giving me a life. Oh, thank you, beautiful. I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah. I mean, my father died when I was eight. My mother, you know, dealt with that when she was probably forty four, so I get that and uh I love you. Thank you for listening. And uh, one more to 69, you know? Yes, and I love you. And condolences to Bray and the family. All right, you too. Thank you for listening. What a sweetheart. I'm so sorry to hear about your husband, though. I can't imagine it. I cannot imagine, like, not living with my wife. You know what I mean? I totally understand it. I can't even deal with my dog. When my dog died last year, I, I still can't deal with that. So I can only imagine, you know what I mean, dealing with the loss of a husband, a loved one, you know, Bray Wyatt's family, his children, you know, um, all that sort of thing. I can only imagine that stuff. But the one thing that we can say that's good is she's almost 69. And we know how much that makes me happy. So, um, I, by the way, I will, um, give Luke Rojas your number. So just so we can, um, cause he's been looking for this for a while. You guys couldn't hear. I'll turn it up a little bit more next time. Huh. Sorry about my donation if you play it, Joe, just FYI. Okay, well, that's that's that's, that's, that's fairly ominous, isn't it there? Um, Soundwave 92, it's a little bit scary. Oh, my God. Let's go to the 781. We lost everybody else. My bad. 781, hello. Hey, how's it going? This is Matt. Matt, baby, over there somewhere in Massachusetts. Yes, yeah, Weymouth, Mass. Yep. Oh, hell Yeah. Right next to my, yeah. well, we're going to hang up on you because I'm from Quincy, so we're going to hang up on you. Oh, dude, oh, really? No, I'm just kidding. No, go ahead. What's going on? Oh, man, I'm I'm, I, I'm just, I'm like everybody else. I'm, like you just you said it earlier, I don't even know, I'm not even processing what I've been reading right now with Bray. It's just, uh, he, he's really one of the reasons I, I'm 43, yep. and he's one of the reasons that I kind of stuck with the current product because I appreciated his art. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's he's somebody who got me excited. I know when he came several times when he came back, I mean, he made things more exciting for a while. And exactly. I think things fizzled out on many of the runs and so every time he was coming back, you were like, All right, this is gonna be the time, you know? Yep. And yep. I think that some of what apparent maybe I'm not I don't know, but apparently some of this stuff played into why things were a little bit wobbly there towards the end, and then he went missing. I, I just can't believe he was gone for seven yeah. months, and they kept it quiet that something was going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I feel like all the stops and starts, you know, just like anybody, especially if you're dedicated to your craft like he obviously was, it's got to take its toll on you mentally, which I, I, I feel like it's probably going to – we'll probably find out that if that played some role in everything. But it's just on top of it, you feel bad because the fact he's got four kids that are still here, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's very, it's, oh, dude, it's so, it's so gut punching. But it's like, I don't know, man. It's, it's going to take a while to figure it out, um, to yeah. figure out what's really going on. I don't know when they're ever going to tell everybody, but, uh, thanks for the call, bro. And, uh, shout out to Weymouth because, yeah, I live Thank right across the water yeah, no. from you. All right, bye. Ready. Good stuff. All the way from Weymouth. I'm trying to keep it together myself, bro. It's hard. It's hard to keep it together. I'm sorry if you're not getting through. The phone lines are exploding right now. I just want to let you know the phone lines are exploding. Um, did I see Swerve Strickland's street uh, tweet? Zex? Uh, no, I did not see it. Let me let me go look at Swerve. I love Swerve, man. He's been doing really well recently. So let's see what Swerve wrote. 
because he's been um he's been um well he tweeted out we need to stop we need to stop only coming together when we lose somebody he's not wrong i mean there's so many crazy things and people yelling about all kinds of stuff at each other but then when something like this happens everybody you know we all stop and everybody goes oh my god and you know when when and i i get it man i mean there were people that were making videos there were people angry about stuff and complaining about the bray wyatt situation and upset and i, I honestly think i was part of that i think i was somebody who thought yeah oh, well, whatever is going on, we don't know. And now to find this out, I mean, I feel like a fool for the, some of the things that I thought and speculated over the months about what was going on when it was completely, ridiculously something it's something else. Ugh. What up, Yankee Kyle? Thank you. Appreciate it, man. I mean, I uh, thank George, John. How you been, man? I haven't seen you in forever, dude. I remember that. Um, I remember some of the first videos, some of the first videos that we did on this channel when I decided to launch a solo YouTube channel that was devoted to wrestling and hockey. And really, we just stuck with wrestling, but. When I decided to launch this channel in 2012, and we really started working on it in 2013, one of the first videos, if I'm not mistaken, that, that I did, or one of the first things I remember doing was talking a lot about Bray Wyatt and and the... Um, um, God, I can't speak right now. The Wyatt family. Chris, my co-host, Chris... At the time, one of my first co-hosts, Chris, he was so into the Wyatts and what they were doing. He was absolutely loving it. And and one of the first videos that we did where, where I started involving somebody else in my channel was with him. And we called it uh, Bray Wyatt Love It or Hate It, State of the WWE. And I did my first State of the WWE. And me and Chris did an eight-minute show and there it is right there uh august 1st 2013 and we talked about the wyatt family and bray wyatt and how we loved this and he was really it brought him back to wrestling that's what brought him back to wrestling and over the years you know he always got excited when when something new was going to happen with bray wyatt because that's what pulled him back into wrestling at the time and so that was a big deal and um, I obviously that was one of our. Yeah. So you're not happy with we're we're, we're going to play. We'll play a little bit of that later. But it was just really it was really what started everything again, man. And then and then as we went through, you know, the, the, that month was the month where SummerSlam happened, where uh, Daniel Bryan became what he was. And he had done the stuff with the Wyatt family. And I would say that was probably a year into my channel or so. But prior to that, I'd been doing a lot of solo videos and little quick little videos, giving my opinion on things. But that was where we first started going live and, and things like that after all the shows. Um, but yeah, Bray Wyatt, uh, they reached Mike, uh, Mike Rotunda, his father, William Rotunda, Bray Wyatt's father, reached out to Triple H earlier about a couple hours ago now, maybe. Uh, it was uh, actually um, it was actually an hour and an hour and 20 minutes ago that Triple H tweeted out that the Rotundas had reached out to him to let him know that Bray Wyatt, um, William Rotunda, has passed away uh, at the age of 36 unexpectedly after apparently battling a, a life-threatening illness for seven months but then being cleared uh, allegedly two weeks ago, beating it and being on his way back. I don't know what changed in two weeks from seven months of a life-threatening illness to all of a sudden, now, he's passed away. I don't know what changed in that time. 
but none of us knew that he was dealing that I know there was no reports that he was dealing with a life-threatening illness within those seven months I had no idea about that and most people I don't think did I don't think anybody there was no reports about it anywhere that I could tell that I remember because I would have remembered I would think doing a video and talking about that but it never happened but two weeks ago I remember when the news came out that oh he's been gone for seven months because he's been dealing with a life-threatening illness I, I all I, I I'm so I listen I lost my father when I was eight years old whenever I hear about somebody losing their father and their family it drives me crazy inside I got three kids I got three kids I was eight years old when my father died unexpectedly my father died of a heart attack unexpectedly I was eight years old it ruins me inside when I hear about somebody passing away that has kids because I can feel the trauma it is so important and like for all the people in their lives to be in their lives um hopefully the mothers um Mike Rotunda his family is pretty strong I believe so the kid will be well supported in the wrestling world and things like that But it, it is um that's the bit that's the real story. That's the real sadness. It's not a it's it's that the, there's a family here and there's something it's gonna affect a lot of people. That's the real thing that's that sucks. You know what I mean? There's one thing you have a career ending injury, whatever, you gotta go do something else or whatever. But you don't want kids to lose a father. You don't want people that are depending on somebody and that, you know, want them to be there to, to lose that. So that's that's the thing that sucks. Felt the same way with Brody Lee. And um, feel the same way when I hear a stranger. It happening to a stranger. I can't deal with it. Felt it's hard, it's hard to, you know, think about that for me. I don't like thinking about the kids. I want to give them all a big hug. I want to give all the kids a big hug. I want to tell them, hey, I, you know, I know I I went through that. I can tell you, I you know, I I have a lot of feedback. Um, but yeah, that's about all I'll say about that. So I don't explode into a puddle of tears and piss. But um, this man excited crowds. This man excited the wrestling industry, the wrestling world. Who I mean, I wouldn't think I'd be sitting here talking about this again. And we were, you know, we were, we were gonna go and we we're gonna do all I know, and we're gonna do. I'm gonna move my all in stuff to to Friday night now because of this stuff. So the all in stuff Friday, the SmackDown stuff probably Friday night. Uh, let me just read some of the chat. Do we know how Bray? No, we don't know how Bray died. We don't know what happened. We, 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 again, real quickly, we know that he was out seven months with an undisclosed injury, but it turns out that was a serious life-threatening illness that he was battling. Then we got news two weeks ago that he was going to be returning and he beat some kind of serious illness that was life-threatening, career-threatening, but he's coming back two weeks ago. Now today he's dead, and we don't really know why. As many of you know, um, I tweeted it out earlier. Many people don't have access to my new Twitter, my new Twitter account, because obviously I was banned on Twitter years ago. Lost all thirty-six thousand followers and everybody. So over the years, different Twitter accounts. I know it's hard to find me on Twitter. I understand it. It's at Meta World Online, at Meta World Online. Joe Cronin Show producer. Just for the people that asked where the tweet was. Uh, that I had placed earlier. Um, uh, yeah, it's right after my tweet about the... Uh, I, I was doing... I did commentary for AJ Styles and RVD a, long, a while ago for uh, Title Match Wrestling, 
and some wrestling commentary for a couple other things. It's right, so you'll see my tweets about the wrestling commentary, and then right after that, I think I, I think I retweeted Triple H's tweet, so you can find it there, uh, Max. August 23rd, uh, Triple H tweeted, Every night in cities all over the world, Terry Funk left it in the ring for the business and for the fans, an icon of our industry. My thoughts are with Terry's family and friends. And it's just crazy that, you know, right after that, back-to-back just tragedy. Back-to-back tragedy. Hey, Soundwave, thank you, man. I'm going to play the donations in a second. I'm sorry. I did not expect to be covering this and I didn't even I didn't even have the thing up to play the donos. I'm sorry. Um Crazy. Um Yeah, there's no other clarification from anything. I I wonder how many people knew if he was dealing with something. I just can't believe it, man. It was kept quiet for seven months, if that's true. How did they do this? How did they do this? The Rock deleted a tweet. I don't know why he deleted it. I went to read The Rock's tweet from 47 minutes ago. I don't know why it's it's not it's deleted now. I don't I don't know why. Um, maybe he, okay, he, he read, he redid his tweet. So I won't, I won't play the one that he deleted because he obviously made some kind of mistake he wanted to fix. The Rock has responded. The Rock has now responded to, um, Bray Wyatt's passing. He said, I'm heartbroken over the news about Bray Wyatt passing. Always tremendous respect and love for him and the Rotunda family. Love the presence and promos. Um, I mean, it's a big, long tweet here. Let me, um, expand it. We have the rocks reaction here. Heartbroken over the news of Bray Wyatt's passing. Always had tremendous respect and love for him and the Rotunda family. Loved his presence, loved his promos, in-ring work, and connection with the WWE universe. Very unique, cool, and rare character, which is hard to create in our crazy world of pro wrestling. Still processing losing the GOAT, Terry Funk, yesterday, and now Bray Wyatt today. My love, light, strength, and mana to the Rotunda family and Funk family during this tough, heartbreaking time. As always, thank you for the house. Uh, from uh, The Rock, who's dealing with all the stuff in Maui right now and all that crazy stuff that's going on in Hawaii and, and Maui from um, people that don't know how to run a place. Um, Bray Wyatt, dead at 36. Seven months of battling some kind of undisclosed illness that we don't know what it was a life-threatening illness for seven months, only to find out the news two weeks ago, finding out news two weeks ago that he beat a life-threatening illness and he was making a return that was being it was being underplayed, but the news sounded like a triumphant return after beating an illness in seven months of it, which would explain why he left so abruptly and things went kind of bizarre towards the end there of the run. Only to find out that two weeks later, he's now dead. Much like the Brody Lee situation, it was kept quiet. Nobody knew about this that I know about. Except for at the very end, the only difference is all of a sudden, we got news two weeks ago that, oh, but all that being said, he's coming back. Which was like, okay, cool. I wonder what happened. But thank God, but uh, but I wonder what happened. I thought it was something different. I thought it was family something or mental or something was going on. But okay, all right. Oh, wow. Okay, he's coming back though. Okay, on to the next thing. He's coming back. We'll find out later what happened. That's weird. That's it. That's that's about what people did. They breezed over it. I did. 
only to find out he's he's now dead. Unexpectedly today, he's now dead. Via Triple H, one hour and 30 minutes or so ago, from Bray Wyatt's father, William uh, Wyndham Rotunda's father, Mike Rotunda, also known as IRS. Our thoughts are with his family. We ask that everybody respect their privacy at this time. Uh, that's crazy. Mr. X on Twitter told me that he was looking for Curb Your Enthusiasm and he found me with this trending news on YouTube. That's crazy because Curb Your Enthusiasm is one of my favorite shows. I once did a skit with Curb Your Enthusiasm and then they uh, they just took it. <laughs> they never... Nothing. Um, but it just sucks. This sucks again. It sucks again. A lot of people are upset, crying, upset. I'm gonna. I, I I've been putting off the donos because I didn't know this was gonna happen. I didn't have the things up, and I didn't want to go into those too much. I mean, who knows what people are gonna do? But if if you don't know my show, this show has always been about wrestling. I've been live after every Monday Night Raw since 2013, live on YouTube. I, I think I might be one of the oldest shows to be going live after Raw every week on Monday nights. We've been doing this for so many years. We've been live so many times and someone has passed away. It's just devastating. It's gut punching. And I don't 100%, you know, always fully know exactly what to tell you other than uh, I'm so shocked that I can't believe it. And on top of that, this is a guy who brought excitement to a lot of people and brought a lot of people back to watching wrestling multiple times over. A lot of kids got into you know got into wrestling more because of him. They wanted to buy the mask. The fiend gimmick was wildly different, you know, in some ways than anything you know, in, reminiscent of certain things. A hybrid almost of, you know, a hybrid of almost uh, Sting, Mankind, Undertaker, and some kind of new thing that we'd never seen. The the Fun House at one point carried the show. There was there was a time where the show was so n terrible. And, and things weren't going well, but one thing that was entertaining was the Firefly Funhouse. We found that to be one of the most entertaining things at a point. And um, I am just shocked that we did not know that this guy was dealing with this for seven months. Kurtman, uh, no, you haven't been banned, bro. You're still here. You haven't been banned, bro. Uh, still feels unreal. Yeah, still feels unreal to me. Adam, Adam, what are you doing, man? You can call three three nine. I'm sorry. I'll put the the phone lines are the phone lines are so jammed they're frozen, bro. I gotta be honest. I'll, I'll uh, go back to them. There's the, so many phone calls; it's crazy. I can't even I can't even tell who I'm picking when I click the call. So six two three, hello. Hi there. My name is Brandy. I'm in Phoenix, and um, I just you know we've lost two of the three Wyatt family members at such a young age, with both fighting life threatening illnesses without any of us knowing. And it just makes me kind of almost wonder if there's some kind of curse on. Um, on the Wyatt family. Well, I would say that Rowan should uh, be very, no, I'm, no, I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't think there's a, I don't know, man. I, I mean, it is, it is messed up. It is coincidental, bizarrely to me, maybe that the Wyatt family, I mean, no doubt two of the three members, bizarrely illnesses, um, yeah, it's a it is a bit strange. I don't think they're cursed though. I mean, it feels like they are, but it's you know, we'll find out. Jesus Christ! <laughs> like, I wouldn't say it's a it's a real curse, but um, it feels like it. <laughs> I 
Oh my god, bro. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> uh. I mean, who are the um Braun and listen, Braun and Rowan are still running around, so we'll, they'll be okay, I think. Maybe. Braun and Rowan are I don't know. They're buying. They're buying property. They're they're investing in uh, the Be Well body scan right now or something. I don't know. I don't know what to say to that without sounding terrible. Thanks for the call though. Sounded hot. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. We lost Brody Lee and now Bray Wyatt. It's such a shame that Bray Wyatt never won a Mania match. The Firefly Funhouse match didn't really count because it wasn't really a match. WWE better do a tribute show tomorrow on SmackDown or a bell salute. Oh my God, here we go with this. You know, every time something like this happens, someone says they better do a thing. It's not going to help them. It's not going to bring them back. Uh, you know what I mean? They better do They better what, folk, do the whole show on them. It's not going to matter. Still gone. I don't even care. I'm just angry right now that the guy is gone. I can't fucking believe it. Sorry. I, I, there goes the monetization, I swore. I can't believe the guy has gone. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm i not going to judge. You know, I, I don't know, man. I just, I can't get into doing the thing that so many people do where they, they're going to go, they're going to start judging WWE on how they handle Like, this just happened, dude. This just happened. We're going to do the thing where we judge, you know, how WWE handles somebody dying. You know, it's like, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm processing this. Yes. Are you live? Yes. Oh, never mind. Okay, why? I was going to ask you to start a pot of water so I can throw the oh. when I get home. Yeah, I'm alive right now. All right, that was the wife. No, daddy's, daddy's working overtime. Unfortunately, we we hope to be on the air tonight, do an hour long stream about all the wrestling stuff this week, and then um, and that that's about it. Thank you for the call, by the way. I love the callers. I, by the way, I I started to mention it earlier. Like I said, we've been doing this show live for over ten years now, uh, eleven years, whatever it's been, and uh, I am a bit of a. I do a lot of, I like to make a lot of jokes. I like to make a lot of dark jokes. I, mean, I like to make, do a lot of comedy. So if I say something, you know, goofy to you, don't get upset. Don't be worried. I probably really like you. I just say crazy stuff. Don't take, don't take it personally. It's not you. I'm nuts. Okay. So don't worry about it. So far we've had good calls and, uh, and two of the three calls have been females, which with my audience being an 8% female audience is kind of amazing. Maybe they're all just clicking the mail button. You know what I mean? When they sign up on YouTube, I don't know. But yes, yeah, Bray Wyatt, 36 years old. <sighs> 36 years old. Like I said, wrestling royalty, Mike Rotunda, IRS, the Wyndham family, Wyndham Rotunda, a fire name, amazing name of wrestling royalty who has been successful in the WWE like you couldn't believe. One of the most successful in the last 20 years. His name's on that list. That's incredible. We thought he was coming back after seven months of being gone. We didn't know what was going on. To find out that he was dealing with an illness that could have killed him. And he's coming back two weeks ago. And now he's dead. Just side completely thrown into a thrown just completely for a loop over this whole process, over this situation. Shocking is an understatement. Shit bomb. Wow. Just wow. First, Terry Funk, now Bray Wyatt. And Bray was still young. Not that young, but young. Taken from us too soon. Listen, I'm, I'm going to definitely say he was young. You know, being that I'm 
being that I'm approaching 40, I'm going to say that he was young. The fact, I mean, he's younger than me. Do you know what I mean? The guy is younger than me. He's my wife's age. The guy's younger than me. He's young. Louis Belmont Show. Thank you for the five dollars coming to five dollar ship bump. Very young to me. No doubt. And again, it's harder when you don't you don't even know this is happening. That's the crazy thing. We didn't know he was sick up until two weeks ago. And I think everybody, again, like I said, everybody was robbed of knowing, of feeling that compassion, of being prepared. I'll tell you what. I almost think that, I don't even know. I, I don't want to say that, actually. I don't know. I don't know what's really going on. So I'm not even going to say, I was just going to say something. I, I Listen, it takes a lot for me to censor myself. It takes a lot for me to censor myself, but I don't know the details about stuff, so I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. I'm not going to do it. It would have been, it just, it'd be weird to do that. So I won't do that. But I don't know. It's very hard. It's very crazy to hear all of a sudden, oh, yeah, that person was dying of something, but guess what? They're coming back. What? Oh, now they're dead. That is, that is a gut punch of, that is a roller coaster of, 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 um, surprise this guy got so many people back into wrestling people looked so forward to this and have uh, loved and enjoyed Bray Wyatt you know that it's 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 sad man it's shocking it's sad a lot of kids liked him you know I think that um, he was still with JoJo, right? I believe so. I mean that you feel really terrible for her and the and the kids and stuff and all the kids involved and you know everything. New subscriber. You fucking mark. Jose R. Mays, thanks for subbing, man. Welcome uh, to the channel, bro. Thanks for subbing to the. Ch Too bad it's under these circumstances, but thank you for subbing to the channel, bro. Appreciate that. I'm gonna to try to read comments in the in the chat throughout the the stream here. I know the chat is just blowing by. It's been really hard to see everything. How did he die? Um, Toto Dope, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. How did he die? Let me just put it. Uh, all right, man. I'll put it in there for you. Yeah, it's hard to read the chat. I'm sorry. It's just been flying by so much. It's, it's actually not that bad now. I, was, I must have been catching up as I switch. Uh, switch pages. I'm gonna. He did, we don't know how he died. Nobody knows how he died. He battled an illness for seven months, seven months, and he almost died. And he was rumored to be coming back. He beat the illness, and he was coming back in two weeks. And now he's passed away. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. I heard that same report, but in the tweet, Triple H said it was unexpected, so it was either the illness came back real fast or it wasn't that. Yeah, I, I you know, I don't know, Gerald Armstrong. Gerald, thank you for the nine um, and sending me that. You know, I just, I don't know. We don't know that. So I can't say, I don't want to speculate. I'm trying to do the right thing by not speculating too much on it. So I don't know. We don't know. We just, but yeah, what you said was true. What you said is true. We we know that for seven months he was battling something, and apparently it was a life-threatening and career-ending. I mean, dude, once something's, I, I don't know why they wrote life-threatening and career-ending. Like, career-threatening and life-threatening? Well, if your life is threatened, of course your career is threatened. I don't understand that headline. That headline to me doesn't, you know... That headline doesn't make sense to Rybotch, okay? It doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, the bottom line is, yes, seven months he was gone. We didn't know what it was. It's apparently it was a life-threatening illness. And he beat it. So... Uh, 
Um, we have uh, breaking news on this situation. Apparently, apparently, we have breaking news on this situation. And of course, it's from somebody who's just a terrible fucking person. But when, like, um, all right. Apparently, we have breaking news. Let me uh, go see that news. Um, somebody sent me something, but I don't, I don't think it's true. Maybe it is true. I can't tell if it's true or not because, uh, the person hasn't tweeted since 2022. I'm so lost. I'm trying to, I'm trying to clarify some news real quickly. Hang on a second, guys. I'm trying to, um... People are sending me something, but I just want to make sure that it's real because I'm just getting screenshots. Um, I, I don't see this news. Um, I don't want to read this till I clarify it. Um, a lot of people are sending me this. A lot of people are sending me something. I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I'm trying to clarify this. Hold on everybody. One second, please. It's, so sometimes it's this is when it becomes hard to do this at the same time but I just want you to stick with me for a second because this is kind of important that I clarify something and I see the donations I'm going to play the donations in a second I'm going to go back to the phone calls 339-226-6610 we'll go back to the phone calls in a minute again just to reiterate you know or are they going to go you know is there something there's got to be something new probably that happens and Triple H, again, like I said, tweeted out this information a minute. I saw it within a minute. I was hoping for more news, but we, uh, you know, we don't know the fact. Okay, we've got breaking news. This is important. This is important breaking news. Um, it's being said on Twitter that, um, that Fightful is tweeting that, um, they were given permission to reveal, this is eight minutes ago. This only was tweeted out eight minutes, eight minutes ago. And it comes from, you know, it comes from Sean Ross Sapp, so you take that for what it's worth. But I was given permission to reveal earlier, early that earlier this year, Wyndham Rotunda Bray Wyatt got COVID. That exacerbated a heart issue. There was a lot of positive progress towards a return and his recovery. Unfortunately, today he suffered a heart attack and passed away. So now you know. Now we know. We actually know. All, I didn't think we would know this for who knows how long. COVID took away our, our, our lovely Larry Funk from this show. And now that's what apparently has happened here. I 
I was given permission to reveal that earlier this year, Wyndham Rotunda, Bray Wyatt, got COVID that exacerbated a heart issue. I'm sure he meant heart issues or heart issue. There was a lot of positive progress towards a return and his recovery. Unfortunately, he suffered a heart attack and passed away. So that explains what happened. So there you go. It was a heart attack. And we don't know. People are still, the, the next speculation will be, did he also get jabbed, you know? Um, both things have, have been known to exacerbate heart issues. So, it, you know, if he, if he caught one, that's not going to be good. If he had the other thing, that's also not going to be good because it's going to double up the problem, right? So, it's just crazy to me. So, we now know that we now know the cause. I mean, we didn't think we were going to get this information tonight, but we have. I didn't I did not think we were going to get this information tonight but we have that um you know so Sean Ross Sapp says I was given permission to reveal that earlier this year Wyndham Rotunda Bray Wyatt got covid and that exacerbated heart issues there was a lot of positive progress towards a return and his recovery unfortunately today he suffered a heart attack and passed away So it it seems like he had been working towards coming back. I don't know if building up stamina, the heart problems were kind of going away. It, it, maybe maybe he was working his way and then suddenly this happened. I don't obviously know. I don't know, bro. But a lot of people are saying a lot of different things. So I'm just saying a lot of people are going to say that. A lot of people are going to say it was this, it was that, it's whatever. It's, you know, I don't know. But we know, now Now you know, you know what happened. But beyond that, I mean, that's just sad, man. He worked really hard to come back after battling that, after dealing with that. And then for that to happen... I don't know. Same thing happened to Brody as well. If you remember, they didn't want to talk about the issues either. Well, wasn't his a lung, something with his lungs? It was something ran randomly with, with his lungs, I believe. You know what I mean? Robert F Frank is crying that he's no longer a listener now because of the... I don't understand what you're talking about, Robert. I don't. I think you're misinterpreting what I'm saying, bro. COVID in general is is something that can hurt the organs, your heart, and everything. When you put it in your body in any form whatsoever, it's going to bother you. It's going to bother your organs in some way or another because the spikes, pro, spike the protein, all the stuff that happens, it it c creates inflammation. Like it does. No matter what you do, no matter how it comes into your body, in some way it can create an inflammation. Everybody knows that. It's like everybody knows. So yeah, if you have it twice, if you have all the things and you do all of the the thingy things, it can it's it wreaks havoc with you. I didn't get COVID until last July, and I've had some kind of crazy thing going on with my um, gallbladder. Never had any problems ever before. Never had anything any with anything. All of a sudden, I've had gallbladder issues for like a year now. Which, luckily, it's just gallbladder issues. But it was very weird that it came on right after I had COVID. So I thought it was, oh, my body's inflamed. Maybe that's part of it, you know. And then they they scanned me and said, no, you're. we don't see anything wrong with you. Except for your liver's fatty. 
And I was like, oh, okay. I don't know. Seems to wreak havoc with people in some way or the other. Um, Bray Wyatt. They kept, but again, that means they kept this quiet for seven months. That's unbelievable that they kept this quiet for seven months. Seven months he dealt with this issue, this heart issue via COVID. Or or from what it sounds like, it's that he had a heart issue. I mean, let me read again. I have to read things sometimes like 90 times before I start realizing what they mean. Let me read it again. I was given permission to reveal that earlier this year, Wyndham Rotunda, Bray Wyatt, got COVID. And that exacerbated heart issues. So he had heart issues prior to this. So he had had some sort of heart issues prior to this. Much like Triple H, you know, has has heart issues. There was a lot of positive progress towards a return in his recovery, which two because two weeks ago we heard that that he beat a serious illness. And by the way, this happened with Keith Lee. We almost lost Keith Lee because of this same thing. Me and Yam said, and so many people said, that Keith Lee was in a bad place. Like he was dangerous, like basically insinuating that we almost lost Keith Lee because of COVID, that it was a bad, bad case of it, bad situation, and he was in trouble. And that slowly he came back and was able to eventually come back. How long did it take Keith Lee, guys? Don't you remember? Keith Lee was, what, three to nine months or something? It might have been seven, eight months, around the same window, actually, I think. Am I wrong about that? I feel like it is. Your body renews every 11 months. Yeah, you're probably right, Stefan. So, Keith Lee went through something for seven, I, I want to say it was six to eight months, similar window to Bray Wyatt dealing with this for seven months. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, he he was back, but he wasn't in the best, you know, shape after it because of it. Gabriella says he's a private person. He wanted to keep it private. Yeah, he, he probably did. Probably wanted to keep it private for many different reasons, maybe. Right? There might have been a whole bunch of reasons for him to want to keep this private. And I'm going to go to Discord in a few minutes. We're going to have... Everybody's going to be on. It's, it's a lot of stuff to do. We're, I'm doing the best. Uh, you know, this, this is crazy. And look at his look. How he looks. Look at his look. How he looks. Look at his look. He looks like a crook. Look at him. Look like the Soundwave 92 chiming in. Soundwave, thank you, man. What's been up? Crook in the nook. I'm coming for you. I look like a crook. And look at his look. How he looks. 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 Look at his look. You get shook. Look at his look. You get shook. Look at his look. How he looks. Look at his look, he looks like a crook. Look at his look, you getting kind of shook. Look at his look, look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, you get shook. Rip Windham Rotunda. Terry Funk's death yesterday was rough, but this was completely unexpected. Like, I can't even believe that the Wyatt family is reduced down to just Eric Redbeard now. Can't even imagine how he feels right now. I am just in shock. There's something going well, on let me tell you something. Up in space. There's something going on up in this. That's because it, as sad as Terry Funk's situation was, and it was very, like, it is sad to lose a legend. You know, we've been, you know, you've been, as a wrestling fan, worried about Terry Funk for years. You know, we talked about Terry Funk for years and that happening for years, and it's awful. But, yeah, you, you do not expect, you just don't expect this. Uh, oh, I'm 
fucking crazy split personality Scott McKinnon. I certainly wasn't expecting anything like this. And to lose Brody and Bray? Well, that is weird because I don't know what date that was I seen where this woman was hanging out with him and someone said he's not talking into character, he's being himself and doing it left. He said, see you on that talk show. No, it's a little weird. Um. I, oh, I think I do. I, I, I do know what you're talking about, Allison. I do know what you're talking about, Allison. I, I remember the news story or whatever. But you know what I mean? It, the guy was out with his family. You know what I mean? He's, I wouldn't put it too much. I wouldn't really put too much into anything about that. You know, the guy was out with his family, um, you know, and somebody stopped him to ask him something. See, I, I, I wouldn't put anything into that. You fucking mark. It's sad that he kept it from the public. Yeah. It's crazy that seven months went by. Nobody knew. I, I still can't believe that it was kept. And, and, and that's the one thing is like, I almost think that maybe if I, you know, if you knew, Edward, thank you for subbing to the channel. What's up, Edward? Um, we don't know. Shit uh, bomb. He pa- it's a heart attack. Man, I'm broken. Reading this sent a bolt into my spine. He was 36 in his life prime. He endured so much losing his best friends and close ones. He can rest now. He deserved so much more. R.I.P. Wyndham. Yeah, this is really, really, really. You know what also kind of makes me a. What makes me feel a little bit sick about it is that people didn't get to properly like Omar Fakarani, thank you for the five dollars, Omar. I, um, is that people didn't properly get to th- to like give him love, to thank him, to talk about him, to to really kind of like give him some po- positivity on social media or in real life or just the wrestling world to really, you know, be like, we got you, you know, you good luck. And, you know, you, you, that didn't get to happen because they hit it for seven months that this guy was this sick and that he passed away of a heart attack due to COVID. COVID complications made his heart problems worse that he apparently was dealing with. And that's, you know, apparently what did it. You know, he had apparently, and from this we're finding out, I didn't know this, maybe other people know about this, that, you know, um, maybe other people knew that this guy had some kind of a heart problem for a while. I, I had no idea. I didn't know that he had some kind of heart problem. So he died of a heart attack. We found that out. That's pretty much, I believe, confirmed unless some sick weirdo were to have hacked Sean Ross, which I don't think that that's what happened at all. Obviously, I think it's real. Um, so, yeah, it was um, people were wondering about that, worried, you know, and then we were, people were speculating. You can't help it. People were speculating about it, and they were right. It had something to do with COVID. COVID made his heart issues worse. And that's what they're saying. Um, and I think one of the reasons it's important to get that out um, is because so that there isn't wild, crazy speculation. But... um. So I that's that's why I'm happy that it came out because otherwise it the it would have it would have been awful to sit here and 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 hear everybody speculating constantly on what it is. Do you know what I mean? Like it would have been people constantly speculating and it would have just never ended with the speculation and the and what could have really happened and the conspiracy and it would have just gone on and whatever. Um so I'm really thankful that we got that news. Let me see. All right, let me go back to the. Let me let me play some more because we'll have to get through all these because so many, so much stuff going on right now. 
Hey, Bullfrog is a moron. <laughs> Scissor me, Joe! <laughs> Back in 2019, The Fiend was the only thing in WWE I looked forward to each week. The Firefly Funhouse was the only thing I was excited for each week. It was hilarious to me. This is crazy. Only three years older than me and this happens. R Robbie Hyde, rest in peace. To Bray Wyatt. Dad at 36 of a heart attack. New subscriber. COVID with the you assist. Mark. Awful news. It's not even... It's just it's just crazy. Brandon Jackson with the sub. What up, Brandon? Um, uh, the Rock talked about it earlier. Tweeted about it. We talked about New that. New subscriber. You fucking mark. Heather, thanks for subbing. The chat is. I'm trying to read the chat, but um, a lot of people are very, dude. People are crushed right now. People are crushed. They hid this for seven months. Kept this from us for seven months. Shit, bum! I can't believe that. Wow. At a loss for words. I feel nothing bad right now, but I know in a few days I'm just going to feel it all at once. The few Twitter videos I've seen of people seeing him in the wild and him saying he's coming back soon. I just hope he passed peaceful. Yeah, it's really sad because it sounds like he and his whole crew and everybody that knew about this with him Deftones 22 what's up Deftones it it feel it felt like he was coming back he really was I'll be coming back soon doing better and better and better here we go and then suddenly boom boom that's what it, that's what apparently happened that's crazy the guy battled this all that time thought he was coming back and then boom Mick Foley has tweeted about this. I do want to jump over to Mick Foley's tweet and see what he said. I People are telling me he tweeted. Mick Foley says, rest in peace, Bray Wyatt. This is awful news. Just terribly sad for his family, friends, and fans. I thought so highly of Bray Wyatt and was so flattered when he started using the mandible claw for his finisher. He was a true visionary, one of the most compelling presidents, uh, presence, um, one of the most compelling presences, geez, I'm having trouble with that word, one of the most compelling presences, presences the wrestling has ever seen. Rest in peace, Bray Wyatt. Unlike Sergeant Slaughter, you know, Mick Foley, honored that somebody's using his finisher. Mick Foley, uh, is that the tweet, guys? That's the one? McFoley's been tweeting a lot, it looks like, about Bray. It's been devastating news. Bray Wyatt, now it's being said, we finally know that that Bray Wyatt, apparently, apparently Bray Wyatt has been dealing with heart issues, but seven months ago, he got covid and that exacerbated the issues. And he almost died. And then about two weeks ago, he was planning to come back. And then a heart attack happened. Which unexpectedly. It's this morning. Although with the heart issues he was having, I would have expected that they would have a pacemaker of some kind or something installed. So I, I don't, you know, that I, I don't know. But apparently COVID complicated heart issues that were existing. And that's what led to this. That's according Triple H came out and told us about this news two and a half hours ago. But Sean Ross Sapp was given permission to reveal that earlier this year, Wyndham Rotunda, Bray Wyatt, got COVID that exacerbated a heart issue, and there was a lot of positive progress towards a return and his recovery. Unfortunately, today, he suffered a heart attack and passed away. So that is a little bit about, you know, what we had wondered about earlier. 
We didn't speculate about specifics, but we did speculate about it must have been something that came back sudden after a complication, and we were at least that was right. You know, um, so just obviously devastatingly sad news. Um, it's one of the most we dealt with this with Brody Lee passing away. It was super strange, mysterious, and sad, and it's literally like Groundhog's Day here with this with this situation. Nobody leaked this out all this time. And, um, but now it's come out. Um, Joe, I'm crying. Call the show. Oh, you're trying to call the show. I'm sorry. Try. I, I'll take calls again. I I know the guy. the The phone lines are just the phone lines are just clogged. Oh, my bad, man. I oh, there's so many people calling. <laughs> I almost sorry, man. There's so many people calling. Um, New subscriber. I almost you got you. Fucking Mark. Hellboy. Thank you, Hellboy. Nine two nine. Let's see who we got. So many calls. Nine two nine. Hello. Hey, Joe. It's Adam. Oh, Adam. There you go. You got through. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, so it uh, just like everybody else, I'm kind of like speechless. And um, I think it was around like five or six something that I was just checking to see if he was gonna upload a video, and then like you know, boom, out of nowhere. I read, you know, the title of your video, and I thought, oh, my God, like, this this was, like, very speechless. Like, even right now, I'm so speechless. Like, I'm sitting out, like, in my balcony, just looking up in the sky, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Because he, he was only 36, and I'm only about to be 33. And it's like, life is short, and I'm always telling everybody this. And I hope everybody that's watching this, and hearing this, like, life is short. Like, I want everybody to just really just appreciate each other. Because, you know, everything ain't always peach and cream. And life is very unexpected, you know. It's, and it's really hard. to. It's like you're that, trying to enjoy life, man. You're trying to enjoy what's going on in the world. But it's hard for all of us to do it. But it can go any time. Yeah, and I I don't want to be the one to say it, but it's like, damn, like, I really do feel like WWE kind of fumbled a bag with this because Bray Wyatt was, was an incredible person and, you know, really had big plans for his character, you know, and it's, 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 like, it's, it's so specific, I, I can't even talk right now. Yeah, but man. First the, Col- first, the Kobe incident, you know, that really... I got his birthday just happened. I think it was like yesterday, I believe. And it's like, you know, it's, it's sad. Kobe, so, Kobe you know, was rough, bro. That was shocking. And the kid thing really hurt me, bro. Watch that. Just knowing his kid was in the play. That was just awful. That was, the, yeah. that destroyed me, man. Adam, bro. Thank you for the call, dude. I appreciate it, man. You don't even know. We don't even know what to say. I agree. Cause it's shocking, bro. It's shocking. You just want to say something, but you don't know what. It's just that all you can say is that you're shocked. Because it's awful. Seven months he was dealing with this heart problem, complicated from COVID, and then he then he dies suddenly today of a heart attack when it looked like he was turning the corner to returning. And nobody knew it, really. You know what I mean? People couldn't have been, like, you know, cheering him on and ready. Like, instead, people were just kind of like, oh, whatever. And when are you coming back? Whatever. Uh, you know, and he's like, soon, I hope, you know. And it's like a lot of people would have been even more behind him, you know, knowing that that's what was going on. A similar situation happened with Keith Lee, but Keith Lee lived. 
And that's what happened with Keith Lee. We've said this on the show with Keith Lee. I know I've made a lot of jokes about Keith Lee recently and the creative and stuff that he's done that I don't know what he's doing. But, you know, Keith Lee went through some shit. The we that a lot and people still gave him shit even when it was happening. That was the one thing. You know, I, I had some problems with, with some of the stuff that he said and did and whatever. But one thing is true. Keith Lee was damn close to having a problem. And luckily he's still here. And Bray Wyatt apparently went through that same situation, similar situation. And this is not good. Not the news you want to hear. And it was kept from everybody, just like the other Wyatt family member, Brody Lee, Luke Harper, who was kept that quiet for so long, you know? New subscriber. You fucking mark! <laughs> Lauren Bradley, what's up? Thanks for subbing. You mark. You got a lot of marks here tonight. Ah, oh, boy. This has been... This has been a tough, tough one. New subscriber. It's been a you weird one. Fucking Mark. <laughs> Kareem ninety six, what's up? I think that um, like I said, he had injected Shit bomb. a lot of excitement into Ray everybody. Is without a doubt, someone who had special talent and unique characters and ideas. Will not be forgotten. Half Wyatt family reunited in heaven. R.I.P. Thank you, Alex Oli. Um, yes. It's hard to say. I never can say that when someone just died because I'm so like, like, no, this isn't real. Um, Bray Wyatt, 36 years old, dude. That's again, that's my like. I'm 39. I'm older than Bray Wyatt. Most likely died of a he died of a heart attack. That's confirmed. We know he died of a heart attack. We know he died of a heart attack. Um, it was reported just a little while ago. Shit bomb! Oh my god, that there was is loud. so little time for many of these wrestlers, and so many lost opportunities to book. No Cody reunion. No New Age Varsity Club. R.I.P. W. Rotundo. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it feels like other people have ages to live. But you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, Gray Man Media, thanks for the $5. Um, it's like, like I said, like I, I learned this at a young age. When I lost, and you know, you guys know if you've lost someone you, you love, you lost a friend or family or whatever. I lost my father when I was eight. So I'm always paranoid that something's going to happen to somebody. You know what I mean? I'm always paranoid about it. Because when you when that happens when you're young and a kid, it's just like the rest of your life. You're like, oh, any minute, something bad's gonna Shit happen. Bomb. Something bad's gonna happen. Something's I'm gonna on go. I'm on the verge of crying. I'm heartbroken, man. I can't believe we lost Terry Funk yesterday either, man. We lost that legend that was retired, and then we lose Chris Tiger. Bro, absolutely devastating and heartbreaking and horrible, and sad and. Just sucks. Chris, thank you. Hey, Brian, how you doing, man? New subscriber. You fucking Mark! <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be hard. Martha, thank you for subbing, Martha. What's up? Yeah, it's going to be tough tomorrow. I, for, I keep forgetting that tonight's Thursday. So tomorrow's Friday. Friday Night SmackDown, is that's going to be... Uh, New subscriber. You fucking That's going to be rough, man. Dragon Souls. Uh, thank you. What's up, man? It's too bad it's under these circumstances, but thank you. Absolute facts. What up, Soundwave? Uh, two members of the Wyatt family, Bray, Braun, and, and uh, Rowan, left. New subscriber. You fucking I'd be concerned, yeah. PlayStation Disciple. Thank you for some of the channel. Um, and, yeah, we, we lost um, a longtime caller of this show, man. One of the funniest bastards we ever had on this show, bro. He he died because of COVID after his liver transplant. You, you know, Jackson, Jackson, Kevin. Thank you, man. What's up, Larry Funk? 
we called him Larry Funk, called this show all the time, he's a wonderful guy. He spent three years trying to adjust to his liver transplant, two years, and it was really bad at one point, then he got really good, and then he got COVID, and COVID, he died because of COVID. Prayers to the family of Bray at this time. He's the first active roster death the WWE has had since Benoit in 07. Pray for the wrestlers as well. It really? Wow, I did not even, I did not know that. I didn't think about that, and I didn't know that. Austin, Austin Blancet, uh, wow. So this is active roster death since Benoit. I had not even thought about that. New subscriber. That's you crazy. Mark. I don't care if it's Dick Buffett. I'm calling you Dick Buffet, okay? Sorry. I, I Thank you for subbing to the channel. I love you, brother. Love Jimmy Buffett, but new subscriber. Sorry, I'm calling you Dick Buffet. I don't know. I'm sorry, bro. JB, thanks for subbing, man. It's probably not that JB, but uh, yeah, I mean it's very similar to the Brody Lee Luke Harper situation, man, where they kept it quiet for so long. New subscriber. You fucking mark. Mr. Joe, thanks for subbing. I miss Larry Funk. He was awesome. Yeah, he was a great caller. We loved having Larry on the show. Um, no, we lost our cult leader. Yeah, I, I think that Brody Lee wasn't in WWE at the time, though. He was in AEW, so. Shit bomb. It's a little bit different. Haven't moved since hearing the news. Had to pull my car over and see if you were streaming. I'm at a loss of words, DBH. Like, wow, man. 36 years old. Way too fucking young. Don't believe in God slash religion, but I hope his family is good. This is tough for yeah, Sasha's mouth blood. Thank you, Sasha's mouth blood. Yeah, it's just terrible to think of the family. Like it's just like Brody, it's like kids and you know JoJo and everybody else that loved him. And you know the kids is just it's just sad. It's really bad. It's really sad. Um, I think it's crazy that New he had subscriber. seven months Mark. and we didn't know about it. That's the crazy thing. Seven months. Uh, Michael, thank you for subbing. Yeah, we didn't know for seven months. And the guy had to go around acting like he was okay, like nothing was going on. Oh, I'm coming back soon, just dealing with something. New subscriber. Can't really talk you about it. Mark. You know, that's crazy to me. That's the worst thing. Nobody ever knew it. Adam, good call, brother. Earlier. Joe, thanks for subbing. It was a heart attack, yeah. It was a heart attack. I, I think I put it in the title now because people have been asking. So I new subscriber. You fucking mark. Uh, Sean Twan's uh, lawn care. Thank you uh, for uh, subscribing. I need my lawn worked on. You know what I mean? New subscriber. You fucking mark. Chet. Gentile. Thanks for subbing, man. First Luke Harper, now Bray Wyatt. Been watching wrestling since I was 10, says Navi is fam. New I'll be 47 subscriber. in two days. It always New hurts to lose a favorite God. wrestler. Yeah, it's been awful. It's been a bad couple of years here, I feel like. It's just been so much crazy stuff going on, you know what I mean? New subscriber. You fucking mark. Boss seventeen hundred. What up? Hey, boss. Yeah, the I'm sure Alexa Bliss's thing will probably be. I don't know. They could they could still do that. I'm I'm sure. Allison Tuckwab says we'll never know that Undertaker told him. New oh, that's subscriber. right. You fucking mark. Yeah, that was a big moment when Undertaker uh, whispered into his ear. I'm sure Taker could tell you. I'm sure he's, he never will, but. State of the Saints podcast, just like State of the WWE here on the Joe Cronin Show. It's State of the Saints podcast. I'll tell you the State of the New Saints. Subscriber. You They're going to need a saint. The State of the Saints. We'll be doing our, I'll be doing my NFL show on Sunday. So I'll see you for that, State of the Saints. Um, it's not looking good for my team. Who was that that just subbed? I missed it. Shit. New subscriber. You fucking they're going to need a saint. They're going to need a saint. Simpson Arm, 
thanks for subbing, man. We're just reading your your stuff, getting all your guys' stuff out real quick while we talk about this. I went on a million rants about this earlier tonight, obviously, but at least we now know the reason why Bray Wyatt passed away this morning was an unexpected heart attack. New subscriber. That brought on um, via because of COVID. No waters. Thanks for subbing. I'm going to keep, we're going to be going for a while here. Thank you for every, thank you to everybody who's been dropping stuff and clicking the like button. All the brand new subscribers, as always, thank you. And uh, feel free to click the like button and stick the thumb up to heaven or something. I don't know. I'm in disarray right now. Elijah Barron, thanks for subbing to the channel, bro. I friggin' loved, I loved, I loved when uh, The Fiend was on top crushing it. That new theme, too, I really did like it. I loved that entrance. I loved everything he was doing. I really was hoping it would go somewhere. And then apparently we, we thought they creatively went the wrong way, but it was that he got sick with some heart issues that were going on, and then he got covid which made it really bad. Michael, thanks for subbing. And then apparently he'd worked himself to come back and he was on his way back and then suddenly has a heart attack after all that. Contrizus, thanks for subbing. Literally the best storyteller WWE had. Gazellig and the company, it's just... Sad, really sad. I agree. Trying to read all the... It's hard to read all the co comments. A Texas Scratcher, thanks for subbing. Um, Marla Brown, give me a shout-out. Okay. Marley Brown. New subscriber. There you go. You fucking mark! I want... I want to hear you call Joe Show. Who do you want to hear call me? The Big Bear, 2922, thanks for subbing. Uh, there will never be another man like him. And I'm, by the way, I'm sorry if I'm missing some of the subs, guys. Sometimes it doesn't alert me to everybody that subs. So if I didn't say your name because you're subbing, I'm sorry. So it, sometimes it does that. Tia P, what up? Thanks for subbing. Joe, you're quick on the news. I, I knew it by you. Thank you, Yanis. Well, I wish I, I wish there was no news, to be honest. So sad he leaves behind his kids. That, that's, the, that's the thing that tears me up, bro. The, the kid stuff destroys me, brother. That stuff blows me up. DJ H, thanks for subbing to the channel. WWE would have planned uh, Bray Wyatt to dethrone the Tribal Chief. I don't know. I don't know if they would have, but there was so much that they could have done and they should have done and that could have happened afterwards. That who knows how much this wreaked havoc, too. I don't know how much these heart problems wreaked havoc with Bray over the years because apparently he's had these heart problems for a bit and then COVID really kicked him into full gear. And then he, Chris, thanks for subbing to the channel. And then randomly, boom, heart attack today. This is out of nowhere today as a result of all of this. Osvaldo Luna, thank you for subbing to the channel. Buenos noches. It's 9 o'clock at night right now. Jesus, the time is just flying by tonight. We're over two hours into this. Right along with Dave. Thanks for subbing to the chat, man. I'll ride along with you, Dave. We'll go to the next WWE show, bro. My light, my light fixture broke earlier the other day, so my shit's all jacked up in this room. New subscriber. You I'm sorry to hear that, Ronnie. It's awful news. Mark Osborne, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Bray Wyatt dead at 36. Seven months they were able to cover up the fact that he was dealing with a heart issue that was exacerbated via COVID. According to Sean Ross Sapp, and then today this morning he had an out of nowhere heart attack that ended up killing him today. Unbelievably crazy, sad, um, and shocking. Thanks for subbing, Nexus. Too damn soon. Hi, Josh. Oliver Vasquez. Thank you, man. Hope you do sub. Appreciate it. It's too bad it's under these circumstances, but it's just the way of the. This is how it goes in wrestling, you know. Over the last 11 years. You know, this is a, it's like when the news covers tragedy. Nerdgasm, thanks for subbing. This ain't the type of stuff we want to be doing, usually. But I appreciate you guys. Borakua Beast, thanks for subbing to the channel. But yeah, this will be a tough smackdown for people tomorrow. 
And then you're going into All In this weekend and stuff. Uncle Dave 74, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. So um, Bray Wyatt dead, WWE star, third generation wrestler, unexpectedly dies at age 36, dealing with a long time heart issue. COVID exacerbated it, and he had a heart attack today. Out of nowhere, after after Lena, thank you for subbing. After it seemed like he was coming back. After battling this situation for seven months, he was coming back. And then heart attack. And no, and nobody knew this was going on. Apparently, except for his close, you know, whatever, whoever knows him and was dealing with him. New subscriber. Other people didn't know. Dystopian, thank you for subbing. Um, there's no other. I don't think there's other follow-up news. The big follow-up was what came from Sean's tweet. Thank goodness we know that now so the speculations can stop because that would have been just draining to, to deal with that. Miguel Morada late Ocho. Thank you for subbing. Subscriber, you fucking mark. Maceless, Maceless. Sorry if I said that name wrong, but thanks for subbing. I can't really see it too well. Um, trying to peek at some of the news. Triple H has announced. Yeah, we got that. Subscriber, you fucking mark. Joel Arroyo, thank you for subbing. Um, Impact Wrestling tweeted out. That they are. We're heartbroken to learn the tragic passing of Wyndham Rotunda. Jeffrey Reimer, thanks for subbing. Better known as Bray Wyatt, we offer our deepest condolences and prayers to the Rotunda family. Out of respect, we will not be live tweeting Impact tonight during the broadcast. Okay? New subscriber. Everybody deals with it in their own way, I guess. Wally Lockwood, thank you for subbing. Can you... Uh, whoa, I want... Okay, I guess probably shouldn't read that. But yeah, Alexa Bliss is pretty good looking. She's having a baby, though. She's a, she's a mom now. I'll hate her. Jordan uh, Pizza Fredo? Uh, pizza Head. Jor uh, Jordan, very Italian last name, Jordan. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Jordan. I'll, I'll hate her. You can tell who's closed-minded and easily misled people are when they get upset about people saying it was, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, listen, everyone, I don't, Dimitri, um, thank you for subbing to the channel. What AEW say? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if AEW said anything yet. Let's see. I, uh, Alexa did say something. Yankee Kyle, thanks for subbing to the channel. I am just in shock, extremely heartbroken, and at a loss for words. What can I say? An amazing human being, Wyndham is. Uh, an amazing and kind friend, one of the most creative minds to ever walk the earth. Hey, Bullfrog, Wyndham, you brought so much joy, happiness. <laughs> She's got to be upset. If anyone is interested, I'm selling my body. I'll perform any act you desire. I'm very busty and clean. Okay. Okay. Um, Oliver Vasquez, thanks for subbing, brother. Stacy, uh, thank you for the three. Thanks for um, advertising your services. I mean, I guess. Okay. I mean, it's you know that's bizarre, but new subscriber. Listen, some people here are probably pretty desperate, and they'll take you up on that. Falling away, forty nine. Thanks for subbing to the channel. Bray Wyatt, seven months ago got COVID, which exacerbated heart issues that he had, and he uh, almost died of it, Came was on the way back, beat the illness, they thought, and then he died of a heart attack today. That is what we know, and that's what we've been told. Poetry has subscribed to the channel. Hello. Very sad, very shocking, absolutely friggin' devastating, and there was a lot of people out there that were worried about him for many other reasons, but we did not see this coming. Didn't see this coming. 
Um, Terry Frey has subscribed. I appreciate that, Terry. How you doing? Bloody Legends World. World the Fiend. Thank you for subscribing. Yeah, losing Terry Funk was rough yesterday, but this is definitely, yeah, this does hit quite a bit differently, man. I met, I don't know, man. I, I, I met uh, Bray a couple times, yeah. Pia Big, thanks for subbing. Um, yeah, this this is is different because with t with Terry, you know, it's it's sad and it's a legend, and you feel this whatever way, and it, and it's and it is. But this is a this is different, man. This is, they're two. They're both horrifically. They're both terrible, but one is like you know the I don't know, man. This is a this is a. Like, you got robbed at the same time. Gene, thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's like you got robbed or something. It's it's uh, shocking. Terry Funk was almost 80. New subscriber. I see Darko. Thanks for subbing. Um, imagine how Bo Dallas. Yeah, I mean, imagine how his whole family. I mean, yeah, probably horrific. Um... Yeah, I can't. Can you like? It's awful. These guys of the people that there were friends of them. You fucking mark. Uh, just a coincidence. Is today Vince McMahon's birthday? Really, Chris and Tara. Thanks for subbing to the channel, Alexa. Is, when's Vince McMahon's birthday? Vince McMahon's birthday. New subscriber. Oh, you wow! Mark. Holy shit! It really is Vince McMahon's birthday today. That's sick. Corey Brown has subscribed to the channel. What up, Corey Brown? Uh, thank you for subscribing. Wow, that is some kind of sick irony or something for what... I don't know why, but it's just weird. Um, that is... It really is his birthday. That's bizarre. MMA, WWE. Thanks for subbing. New subscriber. That's crazy. You fucking Dean say what? Thanks for subbing. Just read it. Bray Wyatt, I felt, uh, this is uh, Indrid Cold. Bray Wyatt felt felt was the only one to carry The Undertaker's legacy. Uh, Bray Wyatt was like Mankind, Kane, and The Undertaker combined. Yeah, you know, earlier I said something like New that. Subscriber. You fucking mark. Ragan, thanks for subbing. Yeah, I always felt that he was very like, like Mankind, Undertaker, and Sting kind of rolled into one. Like different, like a mixture of his, but but he really was his own thing too, you know. He also really had his own thing kind of going, um, as well. And yeah, Terry Funk lived eighty years, even though we all knew him much longer. Petredio, um, thanks for subbing. We we know it was the completion of a life. Do you know what I mean? It's sad, but it was the completion of a life. This is robbery. This is robbery that we lost Bray Wyatt that we lost uh William Rotunda this soon it's it's completely crazy Darla thank you for subbing to the channel yeah it's, it'll be a rough smackdown tomorrow super chat party Nabil um Bray Wyatt crying face I can't believe broken heart devastating Nabil Almula Thank you for the donation. I think, and you wonder with, you know, with football recently, there's been a couple of injuries on the field, like kind of like horrific and injuries where people, you don't know if they're going to be okay. You know, the Buffalo player last year, the other day, the New England Patriots, and, you know, people are starting to treat things way more sensitively. We've been more sensitive than ever as, a, as, a, as people on this planet. And I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? Because I don't know. I think being sensitive is a good thing. But sometimes when you get really emotional, sometimes you get irrational about many things when you get too emotional. Back in the day, somebody gets hurt on the field and it looks like they might have died on the field. Everybody keeps playing. 
and they go, we're playing for Brad, who could be dead right now, but we're playing for him. But nowadays, if somebody gets hurt like that, they go, oh, we, we can't finish this game. That's more important. This is a stupid game. We're out of here. We're really emotional about this and upset, and we're sitting on the field. It's a different mindset nowadays than back in the day. Now, you could say that that makes you a weaker society and a more emotional society, um, and I do agree with that a little bit, but I also love I love empathy, and I like that we care, seemingly care more. But it can lead to bad things if it's not if it's misplaced in the wrong way. So I hope it's genuine, and that we all really always care in different ways. Um, so it's 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 different, and I don't know what the answer is. You know, and then some people say, well, you know, weak men bring on tough times, or weak men make weak times. You know, tough men make stronger times. Things like that. And you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I, I, I don't know the answer as to which one really is right, but I understand where they're coming from, from all those angles. And the reason I say that, I mean, listen, I'm a Star Trek fan, right? And in Star Trek, the old Star Trek or the 90s Star Trek, right? Star Trek The Next Generation. In Star Trek, it's like in order to get to that perfectish world, almost perfect utopian kind of world, a lot of the people on the show are very respectable, Everybody's very smart and respectable, and you could never see jokes that go on, not maybe nowadays because comedy is so jacked up right now, but jokes that have gone on over the years. Things that I say, I say crazy stuff, crazy jokes. I love it. I don't care what anybody says. But in order to get to that Star Trek that I love and admire and I really enjoy, I think, damn, you know, in order to get to that, we're going to have to be a lot more compassionate, empathetic, and boring, boring as people to get to that way of thinking. So it's crazy that I idolize that and I, I love that. And I almost, why can't we be Star Trek? But would I really like that? Because I'm so used to being able to do whatever. And I, I would be looked at in Star Trek as a buffoon, as some dumb, offensive buffoon. If I was beamed on to Star Trek The Next Generation, 1987, 1994, that show, they would look at me like a fool. They'd be like, well, you're a buffoon, idiot, offensive person. And I would be like, yeah, but I don't really mean it. It's creative. It's art. My real self is empathetic and loves, you know, and wants to be that way, but it wouldn't be understandable. So nowadays, what do you do? What do you say? So the reason why I'm doing this and saying all this is to get to this point. There will be people that will say that SmackDown tomorrow should be canceled. There will be people that want to see a tribute show that's on the level of what AEW did for Brody, as if it's some sort of competition. There will be people that say that they should do the salute rest in peace, and move on and just do the show that they would do. Those are three different forms of thought that will be talked about leading into tomorrow. Do you do the show? In the, in the past, in, the, in, the, in 15 years ago, the show would go on and they'd have a dedication. Recently, they would say the whole thing should be a dedication and it should be damn good. But even more recently, in the past, I would say, two years, there will be people that will say just this, there needs to be no show tomorrow. So that will be a lot of what you do here over the next couple of days. I haven't put it in the chat, so but I do see you guys. Um, why do I look drunk, uh, Bryce? I look drunk because I just got done drinking with your mother, bro. And then when I get done drinking with her, I'm going to be inside her. No, I'm just kidding, bro. Um, um, I don't know, bro. These are just my opinions. I'm no, I'm, you know, I mean, what do I know? You know what I'm saying? It's my birthday. So you became a uh, uh, a member. 
Darren. Darren Marshall has become a member. Hey, Darren, thanks for being a member, man. Sorry it's under these circumstances. Uh, Blue Panther in the chat says, as for shows, SmackDown going on as usual as a weekly show opening with his passing, so at Raw it might be the tribute show. Maybe you're right. Bryce Thornton, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard tomorrow. They're doing it's live tomorrow, right? There's no we're not talking about a um we're not talking about a tape show tomorrow. I, I think tomorrow is scheduled to be live. I don't subscriber. I don't think it's scheduled to be anything else. I think it's a live show tomorrow. Uh Big Urn. Thanks for subbing. Someone check Ric Flair, Bret Hart, and Hogan. Yeah. Well, they weren't in the Wyatt family, so they might be okay. Jay Briscoe passing was completely heartbreaking. Yes, that was rough, too. We were live during that, I think. That was terrible. And again, his daughter, his family, like, that's what kills me, bro. That hurts, thinking about his family. Brian Perry, thanks for something. Yeah, he had a heart attack. He had a heart attack after having heart problems and COVID made it worse. Jason Norton, thanks for subbing to the channel. What's up, Jason? Yeah, apparently, so he he had heart problems. I didn't really know about that. And uh, COVID-19, he caught that, and it made the heart problems really bad. He almost died, seven months fighting it, was about ready to come back, and then had a heart attack randomly. So, for all we know, he was about ready to come back after battling this, and suddenly, boom. Roger Carson, thanks for subbing to the channel. And again, Keith Lee went through something similar where he finally got approved to come back after he had heart-related stuff like this. Shit bomb. I believe. This fucking sucks. Haskell Fine face. Love and prayers to his family, all who knew him, worked with him and loved him, and to his wife Jojo and their child. Absolutely, Haskell. Thank you for that. Um so sorry to his family, dude. Old hater in the chat says I don't want to speculate. Well, you don't have to. We we found out. This is confirmed information. It was tweeted out by Sean Ross Cyclops earlier. So, we know that's what happened now. Bray Wyatt has passed away at 36. Triple H tweeted it out. And then we were updated by Fightful that it was COVID that caused a heart problem to get worse. And then he randomly died of a heart attack today. So, that's confirmed. James Petrosi, thanks for subbing to the channel, James. Um... So that's been confirmed that um, COVID made the heart problem worse. And that's what put him out for seven months. And then randomly had a heart attack today. And two weeks ago, apparently it was looking like he was coming back. My biggest, what, what, Joe, what is your biggest Bray moment in your opinion? Hmm. There's 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 a few to to really think about really. At least you made me laugh, man. I've been this has been devastating, so it's nice to laugh a little bit cuz Oh my god, this is misery. It's misery, dude. It's okay, I am a horse. My people matters on the floor. Not a lot of big boned. What? Niner gang, what's up? Rip to the one of the greatest we ever have. I'm happy he wins the WWE champion. Thanks you for all the memories. Crying face. Yeah, at least he got to do a lot. New subscriber. You fucking Would have been nice if he could have, you know, had another 10 more years in his career and then experienced the rest of, you know, time with his family. So that sucks. Um, LaVon Mitchell, thank you. That's a great name, by the way. LaVon Mitchell with the catch in the end zone. The New England Patriots, the Jets. LaVon Mitchell. It's a great name. LaVon, that's a great name. That's a football name. 
IMSG, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. How you doing? We're all going to have to meet the creator one day. Well, yeah, that's true. Um, three three nine two two six sixty six ten. Um, we we'll go back to the phones in a few minutes. My Discord is filled with people. Uh, Cody Rhodes guy, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Appreciate it, Cody Rhodes guy. The Cody Rhodes guy. What up, my friend? Um, New subscriber. You fucking mark. Captain Planet, thanks for subbing. We'll definitely have a lot on what happens on SmackDown. Friday night live after SmackDown here. And then, of course, Saturday night is Monetize This. We will be doing Monetize This this Saturday night, which is mostly non-wrestling, but then Sunday is all in, so it's just going to be a busy, busy you week. Ryan, thanks for subbing. It's going to be a busy-ass week, dude, and this is just put a real damper on everything. A sad, sick news, devastating news. New subscriber. Oh. You fucking mark. Nightmare Andy FNAF, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Looks like, uh, is that Haskell that just told me this, that the AEW has tweeted out about it? So AEW apparently has tweeted out about it. New subscriber. You fucking mark. Michael, thanks for subbing. Michael Emerson, thank you, bro. This was the tweet from Triple H. We we showed it earlier on the stream when I first went live about the call from Mike Rotunda about the situation. And then we played the New other subscriber. tweet. Mark. Flux, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. But let's go. I mean, now they're in heaven together, bro. I don't know who that was. I'm sorry. New subscriber. You fucking mark! Mr. Capriz, thanks for subbing. If you told me that these two guys were going to be gone in 2023, they'd be both gone. I mean, it would just be, like, not believable. Unless it was like, New oh, subscriber. what, on the road you they got in a car accident mark. or something? Like, you wouldn't believe any other way. Nabil Amula, thank you for subbing and thanks for the dono. You would think like, oh, they got in a car, something happened on the road, they were traveling. You know? It really sucks that it, it, it's unfathomable. Wendell Fountain, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. What's up, Wendell? It sucks that the wrestling world has been so quiet for a while, I feel like. It's been very cruise control. Um, we're going to go to the Discord in a few minutes. So stick around for that. We'll go over there. We'll get everybody's thoughts. Um, I'm going to come in in a second. What's up, you people? I will come in in a minute, everybody. I just wanted to tell you another few more minutes. I'll be back in here. Come. I'm going crazy. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh, hey, Daddy. I'm going to need a hug, everybody. We'll yeah, man. I hug. get you. You got to tell Luke about that 68-year-old you found for him. Oh, that's right. Yes, Luke, earlier a woman called. She's almost the perfect age for you. Just so you know. I don't know where this is going. But I'm, I'm walking home it. right now, so I just don't want to I don't want to get a bunch of, oh, my God, there's a big-ass truck that's going by while I'm trying to say <laughs> this. Luke. What, are you almost dying on I'm the way home? over by a redneck. Oh, he's got stuff in McDonald's. I'll be fat ass. Hey, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be crazy if Luke just get kidnapped live on the show? Just yeah. So well, that was, was almost. Just, I actually was just almost ran out, ran over by a car. <laughs> Trump motor. Yeah, jet. that will that would be great. We lose Bray Wyatt. All this stuff is going on, and then you die on the show. Like Luke Rojas is turned into guard guts. Except that's without great. The bike. He's walking home. That's all I need. I no, you, you guys, know. Well, you guys would walking. probably. No, uh, people in the chat would probably think me dying would be like a good consolation prize, you know? Yeah, nah, that'd be great. Bro, we need I you. lose the new co-host. He gets run over by a car. That'd be great. Like, and then, and then, what do I do with the title of this video? Bray Wyatt passed we away. It, we call it McDonald's. No, know, right? no, bro. No, the the title would be fucked, dude. It would be oh, Bray Wyatt passed away. Breaking news. Uh, rest in peace, William Rotunda, and also Luke Rojas dies. Like, I mean, like, can you imagine that title? What, Leah? 
Leah. All right, I'll be right back, guys. I'll be back. Leah, what? Leah! My wife came in here and looked at me, and I, I was too busy. Anyway, I'll be right back, guys, in the Discord. I know you guys are all been waiting for me to come in. A lot of people want to talk about a lot of things, and we'll do it, but it's just so many. Let me get through some of this stuff first. Um, And there's more tweets and all that stuff. AW tweeted. Let me get that. Um... This is crazy. I mean, it's just going to be some generic thing, you know. Which I mean, what do you what are you supposed to say, you know? AEW joins the entire wrestling world in mourning the loss of Wyndham Rotunda, aka Bray Wyatt, a third generation wrestler. Wyndham proudly carried on his family's legacy by forging his own incredible path to superstardom. Wyndham's unique style and persona showcased his passion for the industry and desire for innovation. AEW sends its deepest condolences to the Wyndham's family, friends, and fans. We are forever grateful for all his incredible contributions to the industry. 1987, born the same year as my wife. Telling you, bro, you gotta hug everybody you love. And I'll, and take care of people you love. Hug them. Spend time with them. I wish I didn't work so much, bro. It's killing me that I'm working so much. It sucks that I had to go back to regular work and leave YouTube full time because I have been at I am just at work so much to do work and then come home and do work on YouTube. It's like 60, 70 hours, bro. I, it's like, but I, it, I wish I was rich because I would just, I would just do, I would just do stuff with my kids all the time, every day. That'd be the best. That would be the life. But yeah, you got to, you got to spend as much time with people as you can, but it's hard to now, man. Everybody's got two jobs, or three jobs and people are it's just nuts. Nobody has time for anything because the way the world is. And it's uh, it's too, it's like I wish that the whole world, or at least most of it, could come together in some way to create something, a new way of living that allowed us to work, work hard, be innovative, you know, be real, but also give us that break to where we could make tons of progress, do tons of work, but not bury ourselves in it. You know what I mean? To where we could work 20 or 30 hours a week instead of 70 hours a week and spend more time with our family and spend more time with people, you know? That's what you wish, some way. Regardless of the reasons for all that, I'm keeping it vague so we all don't get into, you know, whatever. But yeah, like you said, man, uh, you never know, bro. Like, it's just... And but th but this guy, you know, and again, it's just it's makes it worse that it's like the guy battled seven months to try to get back, for everybody to get back, and um, and then to sort of seem like he's a he's he's to get news apparently leaked out that he's come he's probably coming back he's on his way back soon it's it's almost he's just waiting to get cleared and he survived a serious illness, and then two weeks later today. He boom heart attack, which obviously is in correlation with those situations. New subscriber, you fight, Mark. Obi Atlanta, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. What's going on? It's going to be, it's going to be, I probably throughout the week, I'll think of things that I'll, New that will, I'll, I'll remember that made an impact as far as, you know, Matt, uh, Bray Wyatt goes. Matthew Hess. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. New subscribe. A lot of thank you Wyatt's in the chat. A lot of people going crazy with the thank you Wyatt's. I love it. That's cool. 
It's good to hear the thank you, Wyatts. I'm hearing them in my head. It's just not New the news we wanted you to talk about. Kurt Blanchett, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. New subscriber. You fucking mark! Control E, 1979? I don't know how you say that, but uh, yeah, AEW did tweet it out. We talked about what AEW said. Stadium Stampede is released. I'm going to play that later. Yeah, at some point, maybe I'll laugh playing that. You know, I don't know. Maybe that will make me laugh. New subscriber. Uh, we'll see. You fucking mark! Jason Bo Gaming. Thank you. Uh, Ron Killings uh, tweeted out. I'm saddened by the news. My condolences to the family of Wyndham Rotunda, a.k.a. Bray Wyatt. Rest in peace. I'm going to miss you, my friend. Old WWE roster is going to be shocked, bro. This is just devastating. Domo, thanks for subbing. Night City Games, thank you, man. What's up, William? New subscriber. You Glitch Wolf, how you doing? Scott Novak, how are you, sir? Um, Armando G, thanks for subbing to the channel. What's up, Armando? <sighs> New subscriber. Where are we on the... We got a lot of things to play, bro. We got a lot of things to play, and we're, we're going to get through them all. Donna, thank you for subbing to the channel. How you doing, Donna? We lost uh we lost a lot last couple of years, yeah. Dunkachino? Don't mind if I My do. brother got to meet him. I wish I was there. I, I remember opening up the Bray Wyatt card five years ago, man. That I loved it. I met Bray a couple times, he was great. Myself. Rest peace. Both Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt, it's a sad, pensive face, worried face, frowning face, disappointed face, weak for wrestling. Hirashi and Umineko Connected Universe. Thank, Thank you. Uh, for the $10 Super Chat Party. Thanks for dropping a Super Chat Party, sir. I wish it was under better circumstances. Uh, man. <sighs> Thank you, John. Bray Wyatt, you'll forever have the whole world in your hands rest in peace jesus you guys you gotta cut you gotta stop it man you're gonna make me cry live on the air and we're gonna get daddy joe crying on the air we don't want to do that good lord he passed away on vince mcmahon's birthday i know that's sick some kind of weird terrible irony of some kind just like really it's got to be Vince's birthday today. Didn't something else happen on Vince's birthday last year? I swear to God, something New happened. Subscriber. You fucking mark! Didn't some, somebody remind me? I swear to you, something happened last year on Vince's birthday. Gabriel Gonzalez, thank you for subbing to the channel. What's up, my friend? Steven Langenheim, bro, I bet you did. I bet you did because it's still real to you. New subscriber. You JD, mark! thank you. Hope it's not that one. Um, Trump's uh, mug shot dropped. Okay. New subscriber. You fucking mark. Uh, um, Adam Ross, thank you for uh, subbing to the channel, man. Is it still trending? It's the it was the number one trending thing. I mean, it was a it was a big time trending thing. New subscriber. You fucking mark. Jen, thanks for seven. Let me jump on. Um, yeah, we had a lot of Jesus. While we were live, we had five hundred and sixty-two calls. What did I take? Five calls. We had like five hundred and sixty-two calls. Good lord, man! I apologize to anybody that didn't get on earlier. Mark. My bad. Valdemar Acevedo, uh, thank you for subbing to the channel. I made a video to Bray, JCS Wrestling. Yeah, I'll check out some of the tribute videos later. I'm not ready to get into tribute. I'm in shock still. 
I, you know. Super chat party. No, not Bray. Not Bray. Sad face. Sad face. Sad face. Danny Sanchez, uh, thank you. Yeah, for the if you don't remember, if you don't know, so seven months he dealt with this, seven whole months. Super chat party. V uh, V S P W. Thanks for subbing to the channel. I had to just resolve a dispute. Be nice to each other. I had to resolve a dispute between my kids. I'm sorry, I was muted for a second. My kids having a dispute. Um, thank you, V. Guys, be new subscriber. You fine mark. <laughs> Uh, Shane, thank you for subbing the channel, man. What's going on? I'm going to get to uh, the new news in a second. I've got a couple of tweets I pulled up. Guys, what's going new on? Subscriber. My kids are you fighting now. Fight Mark! WWE Slam Zone, thanks for subbing to the channel. Um, didn't get any treatment that Roman Shit Reigns. Oh, I don't know about Roman Reigns with and that whole thing. Vince McMahon fired the poor guy only for Triple H to rehire him. That Vince McMahon is a class act. Well, and that's why on his birthday, it's it's ironic on his birthday that would happen. But also, God Phoenix, uh, God Phoenix, thank you for the five dollars. Yeah, as far as the other thing that was said about Roman, like yeah, Roman let it. I mean, they let it be known about Roman. You know, people knew about what was going on with Roman when that whole situation. That happened with the blood cancer. But yeah, this was kept quiet for seven months. That's, again, that's why it's like amazing. I mean, that's what CM Punk was all shocked and surprised that nobody leaked out, you know, the information of Brody being sick. And then with um, with this, we didn't know about Bray Wyatt, seven months. But we did know about Roman's situation. mention it but um i just think that uh i just think it's wild that you know it's very sad if that's true that he kept it to himself that he was sick for seven months and then you know we got all this news that he was coming back and he like soon and that he'd beaten a life-threatening illness and now he's dead why would he die after he beat the life-threatening illness did it come back did something go wrong we don't know what happened. We don't know what it is. We don't know if it was... We don't know anything. And so it makes it that much crazier. I know that sounds... I know that it can be selfish for people. Like, it, And you're going to have people speculating. Well, did he have cancer? Did he have a heart thing? Did he have a... Did, did he, was it the vaccination? Was it, uh, you know, mental? Did he do it to himself? Well, not not if he had a, he had a life threat. They wouldn't say he had a life-threatening illness for seven months if it was something like that. It would be a life-threatening illness for seven months, which usually something like that is, you know, a cancer or something that they found or somebody found or somebody had to go through. But why would you get better and then it happened? Um, did he take a bad dose? I don't know. I'm not sure... You know, I just don't know right now. Nobody knows. And we're not going to know until they tell us. No one's going to know until they, if they want to. Sorry, I had to go up. I had to go find out what, what was going on with my kids. They were like arguing and huh, I figured it out. Solved the problem. I had to play some of the show from earlier. I ran down the stairs. I was like, what's going on up here? Turned out my wife was outside. So I was like, well, what's going on up here? They're fighting over the Xbox controller. So I'm like, there's another controller right over here. 
My bad. So I was playing a clip from earlier, so you might have heard some news when we didn't know about the news. But now, yeah, we know um, Bray Wyatt, seven months. So apparently Bray Wyatt has been dealing with a heart issue for a long time. We didn't know. I didn't know about that. And seven months ago, I, I guess, he got COVID. And that created a problem for him and his heart issues that he had. So COVID exacerbated the heart issues. And then two weeks ago, it was reported that he... He, he survived a life-threatening illness, but he is, he beat it, and now he's going to be coming back soon. And then suddenly, this morning, he died of a heart attack. So that's where we are. That's everything we really know. And uh, it's shocking. Um, my kids are okay now, I think, hopefully. Ugh. All right, let's go back to the, uh, new subscriber. Alerts. Smokey Edwards, thank you for subbing to the channel. What's up, Smokey? And in a minute, we will be going over to uh, the Discord. Everybody's in there. Um, a lot of statuses uh, being sent to me by Rustava. I think that's that. That's not the right status that I was looking for. Eight four nine Timothy, thanks for subbing to the channel. Um, yeah, Steve, I'll be going to Discord in just a second. Um. A lot of people probably want to say a lot of stuff on Discord, so we're going to be going over there in just a, just a few minutes. Steven, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Atkins, so no Bray Wyatt's AEW will know. Yeah. This is a major... This is crazy news. It's my birthday, so you became a... A member... Jack, um, thanks for being a member, Jack Brewer. How you doing, man? Oh, I, I'm really behind, uh, D. Welsh, yes. Yeah, I'm very behind in the dono. Uh, Jack Brewer, thank you for becoming a member, dude. Um, appreciate that, dude. Uh, we'll get to uh, all the comments and things that are being said. New subscriber. You fucking mark! Jay, uh... 13 gaming. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jay. I got some other stuff I want to read for you on Twitter that I found. Randy, how you doing, brother? Pour myself a drink here. Randy does that. Thank you, dude. What's up? I'm gonna re I'm reading something on Twitter right now. Shit bomb. In memory of the two, fave funk moment, ECW title win at barely legal, fave Bray moment, that crazy ass Firefly Funhouse match with Cena, R.I.P. Funk and Wyatt. Trey, thank you, man. I mean, that was crazy, the Firefly stuff, but I mean, I would... Oh man, I want to say that like some of my my big like memories from Bray are probably things from um oh man. Like some of the fiend, some of the fiend stuff, yeah, but some of the um Trey, thank you. Uh some of the um like early stuff, like around the the early stages, the early times. Having trouble off the top of my head now thinking about everything, but um, there's quite a few things. I'm sure there's quite a few things I could think of. King, thanks for subbing. New subscriber. You fucking mark. I seen a post of anything? I don't think so. A lot of people have been, you know, a lot of people are traveling right now. They're not even knowing what's up. 
Uh, toxic BTD Cole, thanks for something to the channel. Um, but yeah, just it, it blows my mind again. Like I said, that, that seven months this was covered up. Nobody knew. Nobody knew this was going on for seven whole months. Um, Her Herminio Santana, thanks for some of the channel. They didn't know this was going on seven months, all this time, kept it to themselves. We didn't know until two weeks ago that something had been going on. That is, that's just crazy to me that, that nobody knew anything. Just like Brody, but Brody was a little more like, you know, he was in a different promotion. Ryan, thanks for subbing. He was in a different promotion. You know, he was a little more isolated from the WWE area and those sort of things. Even CM Punk said he was surprised that they were able to hold it in like that. And so this really surprises me. Seven months in the WWE, Bray Wyatt, we did not know. He had a heart problem, and we did not know that COVID triggered that into something terrible. And until two weeks ago. New subscriber. You fucking mark! And then today to just... Just all of a sudden, boom. How does, what, what is, what was so crazy? What was happening? And this is happening with a lot of people. I don't know what's going on. TRZ, thanks for the sub. But it's going on. New it's crazy. You fucking this keeps happening to people, like, who are athletes, whatever. Like, it's just bizarre. Kyle Robbins, Sirens, thank you. Scott Novak, how you doing? The debut, the vignettes, the shield, the stuff. Y'all, it's a lot of the, the vignettes. That the, I mean, the Firefly Funhouse, dude. That, like, Mr. Ro Satan, Mr. Rogers, or whatever you want to call it, like, was awesome. I didn't, can't even believe we're talking about this. I, it's hard to believe this guy's not here. Damian Cardi, thanks for stopping the channel. Um, Just from the very beginning, Bray Wyatt's, the Wyatt family, made an impact right away. Um, new subscriber, Bob. Bob, thanks for subbing to the channel. Man. What up to uh, talk that talk? Ghetto new news in the chat. Uh, Ghost from the coast is here. A lot of weird stuff. Uh, we really don't need more answers. None of our business is passing. Of course, it's public records, it's public business, but. The reason why is general. Yeah, I mean, we know, but, you know, Aesthetic Delta, thanks for subbing to the channel. You know? What up, Derek? How you doing? Derek Hans is here. D. Welsh is here. Hi, Red 5. I honestly didn't see Double Speed coming when I said Kobe. What? Uh, I don't know what you're saying, Nicholas, but you probably have not talking to someone in the chat. Terma, how you doing, Terma? I want to hear what Triple H says. Well, Triple H tweeted. He was the first one to tweet about this today. It's Triple H. What a genius to the theater of wrestling my mind keeps wanting to think it's a sick crazy work for a comeback. I really missed him and WWE was looking forward to his return. Yeah. Crankor. Thank you for the $7. After, you know, seven months of dealing with this apparently, we were all waiting to see what was happening. And it wasn't until two weeks ago that we could all be like, oh, shit, we're all wrong about why he's missing. Because everybody was speculating on why the guy's missing and crazy things. I said some dumb stuff. Was Boy, was I wrong about a lot of things. New subscriber. You I wish I knew. Mark. Yo, Bigfoot. Bigfoot boy. What's up? By Vince not releasing a statement New shows subscriber. how much he cares. You fucking mark! I mean, 
Some people might be mad if he released a statement. You know what I mean? He doesn't even have access probably to his Twitter account. Nexus, thanks for subbing. He probably doesn't have access to his Twitter. And if he does, it's like he probably would feel maybe. I don't know, man. Maybe he feels you weird subscriber. about releasing you something. Mark. You know? Sure, Vince really liked the guy. You know what I mean? Bonafide Hustler 8, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. New subscriber. You fucking mark! Want to see. Thanks for subbing to the channel. Uh, Michael Hayes has tweeted out. Michael Hayes. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear about Funk's passing yesterday, but you try and comfort yourself by saying what a great life Terry lives. Subscriber. Um, I just heard of Bray Wyatt's passing, and I am sorry. Lewis, um, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. And I'm sorry I have no words except stunned way too early. Prayers and condolences to his family and friends and fans. Yeah, it's basically what we were saying about Terry Funk and everything earlier in the stream. Rog to that, thanks uh, for subbing to the channel. X-Pac just tweeted, please make it stop. That's all he tweeted. Please make it stop. New subscriber. The... You fucking mark. Amy Brewster subscribed. Thank you, Amy. What's up? This one, uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely sucks, man. It's a downer. New subscriber. I you crazy. Mark. Crazy. Thank you, man. Um. Trying to see if there's any other news on anything, but it's obviously just tomorrow. Smackdown should not be anything but full on Bray Wyatt tribute, a full two hours. New subscriber. Yeah. New mark. Again, like I said, they may, you wonder, I mean, they're probably going to go on with Smackdown tomorrow, but there'll be some people that will say, Oh, just cancel the whole thing. Um, Fizz Raymond one. Thank you for subbing to the channel. So a lot of people just say, New subscribe. They, they can do whatever they want. You know what I mean? Whatever they feel they want to do, you know, we'll find out tomorrow. But that just, it just, it just sucks. To see, it needed to be done. Hawk 2004. Thank you, bro. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, the Wyatt family, the Firefly Funhouse. Like, the, like over 10 years since I started this show. About when I started this show, Bray Wyatt showed up in the WWE. Robert Johnson, thanks for subbing. And, you know, pretty much every iteration of everything he did made an impact in the show. Regardless of what you felt about it, one way or the other, and whatever. You know, Maddie Cooper, thanks for subbing to the channel. What's going on, Maddie? In some way or another, he made an impact. A lot of people came back to wrestling because of Bray. Like I said, my first co host on this show 11 years ago or so, uh, Chris. He had come back to wrestling mainly because of Bray Wyatt. And so many people said that back then and were getting into it because of that. 7.30 gang. Thanks for subbing. Amaris says, I'm watching a video package of Bray. Would be better than anything else on SmackDown and Raw. Probably uh, probably right. Maybe. John Cena returns next week. Now, wait. John Cena is not back Friday, right? John Cena is not back Friday. That's next week, right? Anybody know? I, I forget. McCain International, thanks for subbing to the channel. Um, he he might have dealt with that, Jake, but this wasn't about that. This was about a heart problem that he had, a heart problem, and then COVID exacerbated the heart problem and made, made him come close to dying with this illness. And then two weeks ago, he was coming back. Laurie Alexander, thanks for subbing to the channel. He was coming back, and then suddenly today, heart attack. So, Dan Coulter, thanks for subscribing. So, he was on his way back. Two weeks ago, they said this. We read this news two weeks, uh, August 11th or so, around that time we did, we talked about it, that he was dealing with a, a rumored to be dealing with an illness, but that he was coming back. And, it, and apparently from them, it was he was working his way. That's, I think, what they were saying. And uh, Immortal Vertigo, or Virgo, thank you for some of the channel, um, you know, 
new subscribers. Well, Zoomdy, I mean, Zoom Terry Funk, Funk died the other day. Russell Measle, thanks for subbing to the channel. Um, so, dealt with heart. He's been dealing with heart problems. I didn't know about this. I did not know about Bray Wyatt dealing with heart problems for a while. And then seven months ago, got COVID, and COVID made the heart problems go crazy. And he uh, made it through it. They thought. And was close to coming back soon, similar to Keith Lee, but instead he had a heart attack as a, a probably as a result of all the heart issues. And Shit that's bomb. after thinking they're out of the woods. Just got home from work. Saw the news an hour ago. So truly sad. Rest easy, Bray. Unbelievable, man. D. Welsh, one of the biggest supporters of mine. D. Welsh is here. That was an hour ago that D. Welsh tweet that D. Welsh sent that in. That's how far behind we are. So we're catching up right before we go into the Discord, which we will go into the Discord in a minute. Honestly, he probably didn't know about the the heart problems until COVID brought it to light. Well, I don't know. It sounds like they might have known a little bit. New subscriber. That's what they're kind of. Kind of making it seem like that. Yeah, boy. 413, thanks for subbing. Yeah, it sounds like they kind of knew about it. Uh, Dork Knight, you want to talk? Yeah! Dork Knight, you want to talk about something stupid? Yeah! Okay, Dork. We'll get you on in a minute, Dork. I'll be there in a minute, Dork. I'm just running through some more of these really quickly, and then I'll be over there, brother. Robert Ramirez. This is so impactful, guys, that... You know, you talk about 20,000 people that stop by here during WrestleMania. You know, every year on my channel, we get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 people. Lisa Aguilera, thanks for subbing to the channel. Uh, but you talk about how impactful and important this guy was. Like, oh, like over 70,000 people stopping in today. I mean, th this is huge. Sad, crushing, shocking, awful. New subscriber. Milano, thank you for uh, subbing the channel. Um, and everybody wants to talk about it. Obviously, to, to sift through what's going on here. We're catching up, though. New subscribe. We're catching up slowly but surely. Yo, they fighting. Thanks for subbing to the channel. Any other news? Uh, let me see if I've got other news. We've broken a couple of things here. Uh. Bray Wyatt's cause of death reportedly revealed. That's according to what Sean Ross Sapp New said, that it was a heart attack. Um, so many people are tweeting in shock. Gabriel uh, Souza, thanks for subbing to the channel. Uh, Braun Strowman reacted. New subscriber. Night City Games, thanks for subbing, my friend. I really don't even know where to start. This is just what I can say to muster up right now. Eight years ago today, I joined you as a black sheep. If I knew only in eight short years I would have to say goodbye, I sure as hell wouldn't have taken so much for granted. Big Dog Gaming, thanks for subbing. You were my best friend, my mentor, my big little brother, my brother of destruction. You were there for me, all my highs, all my lows. I was for yours. You taught me many things in the business. You taught me so much in life. Truly made me a better person. Charles Miller, thanks for subbing. I was so honored the day I found out you were having Nash Boy and you asked me to be his godfather. Jesus Christ, this is so sad, bro. Um, the world lost an amazing man. My heart is with the Rotunda family, JoJo, and all the babies. Know I love you so much. I'll see you down the road, my friend. And for letting us know how he gone RIP the eater of the worlds. Nabil, you got it, man. You got it, bro. Rest in pre rest in peace to Bray Wyatt. Devastating. You're welcome for the stream. Thanks for being here. Sucks that I have to be on here, you know, and we have to be doing this for this. It sucks that this is what's happening. It sucks we don't do, you know, come together more on like a Raw or something. This is crazy. New subscriber. You fucking mark! Text Mook Pete HD. I know this isn't by forever. Um, very sad. 
Very sad to read Braun Strowman's comments. New subscriber. What are you going to say? You Mark! The Rock, we read his earlier. Blind Kill, thanks for subbing to the channel. Um, a lot of people have said a lot of things. New um, subscriber. You fucking Mark! Braun Strowman. Yeah, I read that one. Okay, so someone sent me Braun Strowman's. I posted that. This Wild Fan Fanatic, thanks for subbing to the channel. Um, Where are we on this? New subscriber. I don't even you know. Fucking Mark. There's a lot of F-bombs, though, going on. John, thank you for subbing to the channel. What is the chat saying? Let me go. I'm going to read the chat a little bit more as we catch up, and then we'll eventually go to Discord as soon as we catch up a little bit. We're almost there. I still don't believe the set yet. I'm still in shock. Everyone's just in shock. Evo General, it's just crazy. New subscriber. You it is getting late, my friend. Um, hey, man, have, have, you know, King Smoker, thanks for subbing. Have a, try to sleep tonight, you know, put on some nice music, hug the family. I don't know, man. Rest in peace, Uncle Howdy. New subscriber. You fucking Mark! I feel really bad for Mike Rotunda and the rest of the family. Yeah, it's pretty awful. 13 seconds. Thanks for subbing to the channel. I still don't think this has said it for me yet. Yeah, it hasn't said it in for anybody. It's, it's just crazy. It's, un, it's not. Shit bomb. You don't want to believe it. I'm devastated. Can't believe that he's gone. People saying that the fiend could be impersonated by other people don't know what they are talking about. Oh, yeah. I don't think anybody I don't think anybody would want to do that. I guess it's the people that know him would know if he would want that or not, but I wouldn't. Yeah, who can think about that yet? You know what I mean? Who could possibly think about that yet? Darren, thank you for the $5. But yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think that will happen. Unless somebody was like, he loved this so much he would have wanted, you know, it's, it's that'd be weird at this point. But, um, I don't think we can, I, people are too jacked up right now to even new subscriber extrapolate that. Mark. Brandon Coles, thank you for the sub, man. 36 years old, apparently battling some kind of a heart issue for a while. We didn't know that he had, maybe he knew he had it all his life. I don't know. And then he got COVID, and that made it worse, really bad. But New after seven subscriber. months, you Mark. Garcia, thanks for subbing to the channel. But after seven months, he was ready to come back. Two weeks ago when the report came out that he battled a serious illness, a life-threatening illness, but he was ready to come back. And then today he, he, he dies. You fucking Mark. It was very shocking. JHC Wrestling, thanks for subscribing, man. And yeah, Triple H, obviously, with his heart issue. and That's a, I, I don't know, because people say, well, Triple H has the heart, you know, the implant, the the uh, the pacemaker thing in there, so to shock you back, because Triple H had some kind of heart issue. And with COVID and the heart issue stuff, it's scary. But, you know, so a lot of people were like, well, well why didn't, didn't Bray get one of those things put in if he knew he had a heart problem? I don't know. And maybe he was going to have that done. Maybe that maybe that was the talk where, hey, if you don't get better, you know, this doesn't get better for your heart. You're going to need that put in and you can't wrestle with that. So we're, you know, and so maybe they were waiting on deciding that. I don't know. You would think, though, but it is similar. It is somewhat similar, it feels like. But I mean, if you have the zapper, I would think that that would help you. I don't think he had that. I don't know what they knew exactly. We don't know the exact situation. But now we know that info. We know that seven months he dealt with it and that it was brought on worse. He had a heart problem. COVID made it worse. That almost killed him. Seven months. Two weeks ago, he was ready to return almost, they thought. And he'd beaten it, allegedly. And uh, get ready. And then today he's dead. So it caught them by surprise after thinking he was going to be okay. That's what I get out of it, which makes it incredibly sadder that somebody battled it that long, seemingly got better, and then died. 
out of nowhere today. That 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 just makes it so much worse. Okay, man. I mean, it makes it really shitty. You know. Shit bum. Shit bum. Sadly, I think there's more wrestlers who drop dead soon thanks to the vax. Wrestlers needed to take at least two to be on TV, especially in the year 2020. For your balls plop menacingly on the table. Thank you. Um. Well, you know, wrestling doesn't. Wrestling always does a number on your heart. You know, and if you have a heart problem, sports will take a toll on it for sure. But um. I don't know. You know, could be. We don't know. Maybe you never had one. I don't know. I don't know how many people. We don't know. Just know that if there was no such thing as COVID, this would this have happened? You know, would would it have been the flu that takes somebody out? I mean, flus have, but this is obviously just COVID causes those organs to swell. New subscriber. Inflammation like crazy. Mark! Craig, thank you, uh, Craig. Oh, I'm going to drink some water. Whew. I'm going to do tonight's show tomorrow now, I guess, because this was so crazy. I'm still going to the Discord. Uh, Majin Stu, thanks for subbing the channel, Majin. How you doing? Um... Yeah, I you um you can find all my songs downloadable on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show John if you want to find them. They're all there. Uh thank you, John. A lot of Johns in the chat tonight. Anybody notice that? N A Sacred, thank you. I gotta go right now. Unfortunately, I have work tomorrow, but I'm going to be crying over this, but I'm going to stay strong uh for Bray and everybody else. Sailor Queen, thank you, Sailor. Have a good day at work and I don't know, feel better, man. Try to feel better. Break. Shit bomb. This guy would want you to be. Was the Mountain Dew okay. Lights Out match with LA Knight Brace final match? You know what? Uh, I think he wrestled at a house show, a couple house shows maybe, God Phoenix. We could try to look that up and find out, though. We could try to look that up and see what his last match was. I mean, it's not going to save anything, but God Phoenix, thanks for five bucks. Yeah, that was um, one of the last things I remember, but I don't. Might have been his last televised match, right? Or was he on a show that following week? God, I don't remember. I don't remember, but I, I think I thought he wrestled some house shows after that, but I I could be wrong. Army Ann, how you doing? The vibe at Wembley Stadium will be different this weekend, Sonic says. Maybe. Maybe, man. They're gonna have to like you just have to kinda like Subscriber. ignore it that it's real. <laughs> Oh. MB Anderson, take the day off for Bray. Not me. I got to go to work. This could have happened without it, Josh says. Yeah, without COVID. I mean, it could have. New subscriber. He could have had a car. He could have had a, you know, he could have had a heart problem that, you know, could have come on too if he had a flu, a bad flu or a pneumonia or. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a doctor and I don't know the situation 100%. Lisa Cave, thanks for subbing to the channel. Can't imagine how hard this is for JoJo. Yeah, JoJo's... uh, No one has any idea what happened, right? I know he was sick, but I guess no one knew how bad it was. Yeah, cards and collectibles. You probably donated this earlier before we knew the news, but... uh, Yeah, nobody knew, but he he knew. They knew that he was sick. They knew that he had a heart thing and that he had COVID that almost, you know, that really hurt him. And he was trying to come back from that. And he had a serious illness. And today he just randomly had a heart attack after it seemed like he was going to make it back. So, yeah, we know now, but most people did not know. And they kept it quiet, similar to the Brody Lee, Luke Harper situation. New subscriber. You fucking mark! Evan Craig, thank you for subbing, Evan. Um, thank you, my friend. Oh, it's crazy. Where are we here with the... Uh 
I'ma leave this briefcase right here. I'ma leave this briefcase right The Cool here. Nightmare. I'ma leave this briefcase right here. I'ma leave this briefcase. I, I right needed a break from talking. Thank you so much for doing that. I right oh my god, here. my my voice. Son, run, run, you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Oh run, run, what a terrible run, donation. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Oh my god, the guy left a suitcase full of explosives. Look out! Look out! Run, oh my god! Ah! Now it's amazing how she runs with that cigarette in her hand. You think I'm a terrorist. Run, you big bitch! Oh, run, you fat bitch! Your tracks today. Never run so hot in all your damn life. Run, you fat bitch! I'm just in shock. Rest in peace to the cowboy. Crying face. Crying face. Crying face, crying face, crying face. Thank you, Cool Nightmare. Thank you for making me laugh <laughs> with that donation. Oh, my God, bro. I don't think I've smiled yet. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. The sound wave, 92. Bray had so much potential but there was always something that went wrong whether it was losing to Cena at WrestleMania 30 or Hike 2019 there was no denying how talented he was. Hug your loved ones everyone you never know when it will be your last. Thank you Soundwave. Soundwave 92. I love when he hangs that phone up like a boss. Soundwave 92. We're starting to catch up. Soundwave. Yeah, we did the we played the we looked at the Rock's tweet. He's back on Twitter and he hears his mugshot. Oh, they released Trump's mugshot. New subscriber. You fucking mark. <laughs> Minnie, thank you for subscribing. Oh my god, the real Donald Trump is back on Twitter and he himself Posted his mugshot. New subscriber. You fucking mark. What? Suk twenty one. Thank you for subscribing. And he posted his own mugshot and said, "Election interference, never surrender." And posted his real mugshot himself. New subscriber. <laughs> you fucking mark. Oh my god, that is really funny. Like, for some reason, like, <laughs> Nate McClyde, thanks for subbing to the channel. Nate, how you doing? Finally, something makes me laugh, like, something that's funny. I don't know. That's pretty, that's pretty bizarre. Like, that's pretty New wild. Subscriber. You come back on Twitter and then post your own mugshot? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> CJ Digital, thanks for subbing to the channel. <laughs> that's pretty funny, bro. That is pretty, pretty funny stuff. Thank God Super I'm laughing at something. Chat party. Oh my God, bro. Bray is spirit animal. Bray Wyatt is now your spirit animal. Night City Games, thank you. Uh, it still doesn't seem right, man. Ugh. At all. At all. Doesn't feel right at all. Shit bomb. Joe, what is that fecal matters on the floor? It's okay cause I'm a horse song and can it be found online? Cards and collectibles. Yeah, you can hear it a lot on my show when, when it plays, um, when people donate it. But it is, I think it is on, I think it's on Patreon to download. You can download it. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin show. You can download it. I'm coming to Discord, Luke. Somebody tell Luke I'm coming. Uh, all right, let's go to Discord. We can come back to these in a second. Well, where are we here? Jesus, we're still an hour out. A couple more, and we'll. A couple more, we're almost there. 
We're almost there. Cards and collectibles. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Joe Cornish. Um, I think for a dollar, even you can download it, hear everything. So don't worry about it. It's in the um, song section. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. Wait, they have the best of Bray on Peacock already? I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. To all the new viewers and subscribers, Joe is many of our favorite personalities on YouTube, especially for wrestling. We've grown with him through the years, enjoyed the good times, and endured the bad together. Thank you, Joe, for getting us through this. Thank you, Jim Cornette. I know that Jim Cornette, you hate me, but it's I can't believe you would come You're on here and subscriber. donate that. You Thank you. Jim Cornette actually showing up. I thought you hated me, Jim. I can't believe you're here to tell me that. Unbelievable, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, thank you. Daniel Lugo, thanks for something to the channel. I can't believe Jim stopped by to say that. After all the mean things that Jim Cornette has said about me over Super the years. Chat that's party. amazing. Julio Guzman. It's being reported he had COVID earlier this year and caused heart issues. Yeah, and I, I'm i still not sure if the COVID caused the heart issues or it sounds like he had a heart problem and COVID made it worse. That's what I thought I saw from what Sean Ross tweeted and from what everybody was saying. So I thought that, you know, that I was under, this, under the impression that that's how the way it was. But, you know, New subscriber. could be, uh, could be wrong, but I think that's the way it is. Joey, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Um, not sure. New subscriber. Aaron Rodriguez, thank you, man. We got some good good names coming in. Aaron Rodriguez, thanks for subbing to the channel. Um, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Julio. Okay, we're thirty minutes out, so we're really close to being caught up. So that's really cool. That's good news. Let's go back over to the um Discord. I am back on the Discord, and uh, everybody will be happy about that. All right. My, oh, no. This is my last match. Um, James Gann, thank you for subbing to the channel, man. Uh, all right. This is my last match. Mountain Dew Spotlight. Was that now? Bray Wyatt was modern day favorite. The Undertaker was fond of him. Yes, he was. Uh, Night City Games. Yeah, Undertaker was putting him over, man. He really was. So now you know what he said. He's just like the modern day warrior. He literally said to Bray this year. Like I remember, somebody asked, "What did he whisper to to? You know, what did the Undertaker whisper to him?" Yes, he said that he the future. Is that oh? He disclosed what he said. New subscriber. Yeah, he said it in an interview. You so you could hear him say it. He's like, "You're the future." And then, like, he also had a recent interview on Stone Cold's podcast or whatever where, you know, Stone Cold was asking him um, what he thought of each wrestler that he was naming off of. And he's like, Roman, oh, workhorse, Brock, strong as hell, Bray, the future. So it's just insane that, like, he said that twice recently mm. and then this happened. Like it's all it's ridiculous. And, and Joe, and this is what's insane. And we were already talking about this since Benoit he, within 16 years, an active member on the WWE roster passes away before they reach 40. 40. Yeah. Yeah. Connor the <laughs> In the thirties. It's crazy. Yeah. I, yeah. Right. This is he was 36, we, right? Yeah. I was trying to figure out what Undertaker said. So I'm glad you guys knew that because I was, I couldn't. We were talking about that earlier, and I don't think I. I had no idea what the Undertaker said. Uh, he was a fat ass. You're, you got to lose some weight. I'm gonna. <laughs> you got to well, stop eating stop the fries, the room, son. Matthew, thanks for subbing to the channel. He should have said. Would have been right, but he didn't say that. Hey, I, I Joe, isn't not. this crazy? The amount of the amount of wrestlers, yeah. despite the fact of how old they were in uh, in, in age. We lost superstar Billy Graham, Jerry Jarrett, Iron Sheik, Harry Funk, Mantar, Jay Briscoe, Mantar, yeah, Mantar. 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 and now that and now we lost thing. Bray. Like it's insane, dude. I literally forgot we lost Iron Sheik. I don't know where the fuck yeah. that was. It's Bushwhacker so Bush. Shocking. Yes, Jay and Joe's world. Thank yeah. You for oh man, it's also true. Yeah, Bushwhacker, Bushwhacker. Yeah, we lost. The, it's like yeah, you forget. You just blowing by your brain because there's so much going on. We've lost so Briscoe. many people. Yeah, well, Briscoe, Briscoe? I, I won't forget that. Uh, I mean, that was pretty. Damn. 
Yeah. You Chad Gaspard? That was years no, ago. No, 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 but that was two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's two, still two, years ago. terrible, though. Well, he we didn't really lose him. Poseidon came out of the deep blue and grabbed him. So, oh, he said, it's time to come home, son. Yes. K, KJ yeah. Power, oh, so thank you. Did they find his body or did they um <clears throat> never find him? In a bottle. Did You're right. Did they I find him? I don't, I don't know. know. I thought they did find him, but. Imagine he's living on a fucking secluded island right now. <laughs> Everybody thinks he's yeah. dead. Yeah, really, he's he, with two really, really, he just did what most of those type of people do. Oh, wait. Wait. Yeah, he was, island. <laughs> yeah, they didn't realize they didn't realize uh, that he was actually swimming away from his son. But <laughs> oh my dude. god! Oh my god, dude! That's that's dude. Child support. My... That's messed up. <laughs> if that wasn't the said, whole fuck my family. <laughs> oh my god, dude! That, my I, god. Mean, I mean, the, what the, the son, the son was. Son was well, half we, white, well, we, and the well, father yeah. was full black. You get the whole thing now. Henry Motu, uh, thanks for subscribing to the channel. Motu. Um, well, now we have a very diverse crew of people on here. A Hispanic man, a half black man, a fully black man, a guy from Egypt, and uh, uh, a half uh, Hispanic Garguts. Hispanic Garguts. Di diversity, like baby. It. Diversity. You talk about diversity, you look no further than the Joe Cronin Show. It's it's uh, Levy, one, two, four. Thanks for something to the channel. Um, Garguts. And man, congratulations on the rest of your family just walking right into the country last week. Oh yeah, dude, that's what we do. We just walk. Just walk right Wired in. in. You, don't run, in. you don't climb, you walk. Also, you walk. I really appreciate the fact that Johnny Autism Wrestling. How you doing? I wonder what that's like. Um, uh, Garguts, it's what I really love is your background. There's like nothing in your house, nothing in your room, but there's that soul guitar just sitting behind you, just and just by itself, looking sad, like it, like please play me. Please play my guitar. Please play that guitar. I know, right? Me. Yeah. I'm waiting for my amp to arrive. <laughs> so. Oh, you don't have an amp, so you can just pick that up and play it with no amp, huh? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And yeah, no talent. Again. Okay. No talent right? and a broken finger. No, I was actually shredding on it. Oh, yesterday. Why don't you sell the guitar? Just, just go ahead and sell it. Sell it to somebody. You want to buy it? Maybe use the uh, maybe use that can as a slide. Who knows? Mm. Appreciate it, but yeah, um, oh, yeah, I could do that. When did you guys find out about this then, though? How did you guys hear about Bray Wyatt today? You, like, dude, when you, you posted your video, you're fucking like, thing, ribbing. Yeah, I told you're you, like, I'm ribbing you. Live. Really, Mr. Yeah. Pico, Mr. Pico sent me a message when I was at work. Yeah, I like, thought, the moment I thought you he was... posted your video. The moment you posted your video, I'm like, dude, stop lying. And the moment I saw Triple H's tweet, I cried for like 15 20 minutes it took it me so I, I had to read some, I, dude I, it took me 15 minutes to, to actually figure out like because i was like i was almost you ever think things are like get delusional for a second and you think something's happening it's not and so you had to read, all the time i read it like 90 times i was like well i know you're delusional mr fucking glitch but you know i was rereading it like 90 <laughs> times i was like i was like and then I'm like, it's really triple h and i'm like okay and i'm going to his twitter and then i'm going on my phone and i'm looking and i'm like what what is going on? And I was I was almost going live. I had everything set up to go live, and I was going live with something completely different. I had to like retake everything down and and like. But as I'm doing it, I'm just like, what? You're gonna go live what? with originally? I was <laughs> going, Bray Wyatt comeback rumors? No, I was going no. <laughs> Yeah, he kicked out at two. No, it was going to be about like John, John Cena's return and the AEW All In. That was all I was doing, and being live. Yeah. Well, now do you think John Cena is going to make a, a earlier return for tomorrow and be like, "No, he, I'm no. sorry, I buried you." He, he, he would make a video package. I could see him doing that. Do you know how hard it is? Sorry. For, it's so hard for John Cena to get out of China to get here to do something. So, I doubt so it. dude, John, John Cena, bro, Gina. I would, I don't know, he might get turned on by the fans because people are just going to be like, "Hey, remember that time you buried Bray when he was like, <laughs> right when he was making his biggest like moment." <laughs> momentum run ever in the company yeah you buried him like obviously it wasn't his choice but well yeah but then karma came back and then you had Austin awesome Theory talking about his ball spot <laughs> they get all the but they get all the people they get all the people that buried like bray like you know john undertaker fucking um who just recently buried him randy orton <laughs> somebody's burying him but... Diana would go said he said that Rostafa found the news out on YouTube kids. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube kids is not even on website number one. Um, You're looking on YouTube. Yeah, well, it's 
<laughs> no, he was looking. No, he was looking at YouTube kids and like. No. Well, no one's. <laughs> Well, Rostafa, you don't you realize YouTube that YouTube kids. YouTube kids, YouTube kids, yes, it's not a website, but to say, oh, you're on YouTube kids is a correct term because that's what it is. It's it's a different setting of YouTube. You're supposed to put a, you're supposed to put a comma right there before YouTube or and then kids to emphasize the space in between. Did you are you going to just continue? YouTube are you going to just continue to lie through your teeth to fucking uh, excuse your weirdo behavior? Like, Dude, why would you post that, that while we're here, bro? It's nobody. It's just somebody to state that they were normal and they were on this chat is a lie. <laughs> I think normal. It's I think a I'm, lie. I think you I'm fairly normal. You yourself, good sir. No one's got ran over what's by not, a tractor trailer. What's not normal about me? Well, except for my <laughs> face, but. <laughs> well, I think I think it's sort of like, like the like. A Muppet comes to life. I think I've got a Muppet face too. So I think the two of us, like, you could really put me and you in a Jim Henson comes to life show, and people yeah. would believe it. Between my face, well, and you yours. had the cat well, mask I mean, at one point. You had the cat I mean, mask you at did. one point, so that kind of manifests itself right there. Yes, I mean, I bet you do like a man's hand up your ass, but you know. Well, see, I think that if I listen, I've been. In, I, I know that people are going to think this is crazy, but I've been in touch with Satan recently. And I'm not joking about this. Oh. I have been practicing all oh, kinds God. of satanic stuff ever since COVID happened and everything's kind of gone to hell for me and everybody. How's Melly? Well, I will tell you, that's a whole different story. That's another story. Um, but I have been practicing Satanism recently. Let me tell you something. And I know I'm really close to being able to take somebody that I care about and love or somebody close to me and sacrificing him to the devil himself to bring somebody back to life. And knowing what we know about Luke, you know, being such a piece of shit person, scumbag, like you are, Luke, um, I think we sh you should let me sacrifice you to bring back Bray, so we could bring I him agree. back to the wrestling world. Because who cares? I thought we were. I thought we were past this. No, it's not. Is that it has why you never to got back that. to my apology? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with you apologizing or what you did last week or what I did. It has nothing to do with that. It's just you look like a fucking failed Muppet. So let's bring back a guy <laughs> who actually has uh, potential that people love, like Bray Wyatt. People love Bray Wyatt, but people don't love you. So let's kill you and sacrifice you, and let's see if this works, and we'll bring Bray back, um, Wyndham Rotunda, back to the wrestling world, and all that people will miss you is like your mom and your sister, and they're whores anyway. So let's go ahead and let's bring you back to life. And maybe some of the maybe some of the people who jerk off at the gas station. Well, what about at. you? What about you? Why don't we get rid of you? You know, you got all this you know hidden potential that's never going to go anywhere because you ruined it for yourself by saying so many horrible things on your show that the WWE doesn't want anything to do with you, and AEW is ignoring you. So why don't you just take yourself out? Because already it's I mean you're pretty much keeping yourself alive for no reason. I mean. Your kids are almost all grown up at this point. You got nothing left to really prove to anybody. Just take yourself out, and then I'll take your show over, and Bray can come back to life. Yeah, but the the thing is, I won't be around to see yeah, that. I'm a narcissist. <laughs> I, you don't understand. I'm a narcissist. I need to be here to see it happen. If like that's it matters so much to me. I'm not interested in sacrificing myself to not know what happens. I gotta know what happens. I don't even care. F the family and everybody else. I don't care. I just need to see what happens. I want to see, I want to bring him back to the wrestling world right now for everybody. And all we have to do is cut you a couple Bo of leave. times. Believe, yeah, believe in that. Oh yeah, my literally, god, literally believe, believe. Oh my god, we trade Luke for any dead wrestler. Actually, you know, yeah, we can yeah. bring anybody back. We can all agree. We can all Rams agree pain. that Bo Dallas outwrapped Flo Rida on that one Raw and made him look like an idiot. Oh yeah, I forgot oh, dude, about that. that. Was a, that you was, pull dude, that up, Joe. Please pull that up. Oh man, that could have been Bo Dallas. Dallas. I don't think I've seen that ever. Please pull that up. I I would love if you did that right now. Maybe that's why they never pushed Bo Dallas. <laughs> Barris does. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> it's no. supposed to beat Flow Rider. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe he did the the uh, the whole um, the what's it called? Flo the Rida is a pop star. He did the brawl He's for not all. A rapper. He did the rap. Give me the yeah. green light. He did the. I'm ready to go. He did the rap version of the brawl for all. That's what happened. He was. He oh really my God. ruined it. That's a great equivalent. Wow. It's pretty funny. Um. Yeah. That. Please pull that up. It was a really really good segment. Uh, I'm just afraid. because Bo Dallas, I didn't even think he could rap. He did rap.
the old speaking of brawl for all knows. i thought last night billy gunn should have announced he was coming back as uh one of the badass gun. billy gunn yeah, no, he was one of the smoking guns well, instead he, of badass. He was building it, he was building it up like somebody else was coming back, and I was like, Oh, he's not yeah. coming back? What's Rockabilly? Then, guess who's coming back? Rockabilly. <laughs> we said it was like no daddy ass. It's a badass. And I'm like, all right, so you put your you're gonna it's retie the same boots that you just had. Like, Wait, you wasn't Rockabilly was like Rockabilly that- wasn't Rockabilly Jeff Jarrett's like um because no, I know that was, was Billy Gunn. Honky Tonk Man's protege. Oh, okay. You know who I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of Road Dog. Road Dog was Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. Honky yes. Tonk yeah. Man had well, uh, they Billy Gunn. They both Similar suck. time. Honky yeah, and they, yeah. Did yeah. they ended up song. They did that one song that they all forgot the lyrics to when Jeff Jarrett came back to WWE and Road Dog came down. Oh, yeah. It was so cringe. When I was and a then kid, it went on like, for like yeah. five minutes. It went on for so long, too. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot the words. They're Remember drunk that at was the during bar. that period of uh, that was that was during that string of Hall of Fames where like every show Everybody's coming went on yeah. like way too long. <laughs> like I think I think it was the year that Goldberg came back and he cut he had like he went over way too long. <laughs> and they were Ooh, like, okay, for, we can never let himself. that happen again. <laughs> he <laughs> himself and he's like, I forgot what I was talking about. Ugh, and he's bleeding. That yeah, shit? when I was walking Dumbass. over to uh, give my Hall of Fame speech, I concussed myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, idiot. Yeah, I remember that. He bashed really? his head. That was at a wrestling show, though, right? That was at a pay-per-view? No, he did it at a wrestling show, but wouldn't it be hilarious if, while he was supposed to give this speech <laughs> by doing the stupid headbutt thing to the door, he concusses himself again. And he collapses. And he has to go out and do a speech. He collapses <laughs> he fucking... during his Hall of Fame speech, just falls over. Just comes out and like spears like and the know, only JoJo one or something and, and you know what's funny and the only one laughing in the crowd Spears is Bret, Bret Hart's laughing in the crowd he's like ha ha that's what you get <laughs> that's what he <laughs> gets Gage get beat, beat up I'm, I really want to see that well, all yeah. I gotta say is what goes around comes around well here's the thing Bill Goldberg you deserved it and you damn well know it and also I punted Gage in the head. All right, Brett. Hey, Sit down, Brett. You know what? No, you but know what? don't okay, even so talk. Everybody you know what, bro? Don't talk about my fucking son, bro. I don't think he really is your son. How about that, Goldberg? <laughs> don't make me call my brother. All everybody in the Riot family are dying, and everybody in uh, the Hart family has died, except for Brett. That's crazy. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of you. That's true. Face. Welcome, new subscribers to Casa de Cronin. Welcome. Descansa and peace, Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt. Rest in peace, Terry Funk, Bray Wyatt. Back to back, friggin' awful news. El Tapo, thank you for the three dollars. Yeah. the acclaim should form the house dude, of dude, ass. We should, we should sacrifice. Very the selfish show. of Bray. Very selfish of Bray to steal fucking uh, Terry Funk's heat. You know. Yeah. Oh, well, you were talking about that earlier. I cracked up so hard. But because hey, Bray died, you what? I just died, you fucking. C- <laughs> yeah, Terry Funk. Gonna, you think they're gonna have like a little like picture R.I.P. Uh, window? They should. They will on AW, and AW, on AW though, because oh, and it, probably. Pro- I know NWA might do something. Impact already did it tonight. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're gonna induct him next year in the Hall of Fame. You should go. Um, I mean, you have to. You have to. Well, I was well, surprised when they didn't. You know, it would be a travesty. This should I be honestly, a fucking was, induction a hall, a hall of Fame of dead wrestlers. I honestly was category. surprised when they didn't induct. Um, do you guys remember when Daniel Bryan retired in like 2015, 2016? I like was for sure thought they were going to put him in the Hall of Fame the next year, but they didn't. So they don't always do it with everybody, you know. I, but I, I feel like, like they're probably going to. I feel like That's if different. they did, he would have refused it. He's like, no, I'm not done yet. Yeah, maybe that maybe they did uh, approach him and said like, yeah. "Hey, we want to put you in the Hall of Fame." And he's like, "No." Well, we also well we also know at least right now we at least know right now that um, based on what is being put out there because there's so much news that's being put out that Bray is going to be expected at least for SmackDown or Raw to get a tribute. How long of one? Don't know yet. I mean, I'm pretty sure well, that they're, they're going to almost... do the ten bell salute. Yeah, they're all going to stand on the stage. Can you imagine all the lighters tomorrow night when the SmackDown begins? Oh, oh yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna, it's gonna look awesome, bro. I hope it's gonna be real lighters. 
Could you fucking, imagine that Roman fun. still doesn't show? Like, you know how everybody's standing outside to pay respect and they're standing on the stage? Imagine Roman got to, like, skip out on that. <laughs> they're just like, he no, no he, like he, all the special privileges that he gets. He doesn't have to stand for another dead wrestler. He just goes, acknowledge, acknowledge him. He doesn't make him look strong. You got to make Roman look strong. <laughs> make something happen. Do you th- Whoa, I think that tomorrow's going to be that? like... Like, do you think, okay, so when Brody died, uh, they had negative one pick all the matches. Do you think they're going to do something weird like that? No. They're just going to be like, just no. go out there and have fun. You don't have to go out there and wrestle. Just go out there and have fun. That's what they no, did with, I, uh, I, they'll, they'll do a tribute to him, but as far as, like, the whole show, no. Unless it was, like, somebody, like, you know, again, like an Eddie Guerrero type of character or something like that, where, yeah, he, he I mean, won the heavyweight he belt. he was kind of, like, that kind of big character. I mean, he died. Well, yeah, he was, like, the Undertaker type on. of a thing. He but was significant no, enough that they're going to spend the whole show talking about it. Yeah. If they but, do, that would be wonderful. But, I mean, again, I No, it, it won't be, be wonderful because nothing will happen on SmackDown. What was it? Yeah. I missed it. I had my mic off. Um, oh, was there a donation? Uh, no, we didn't hear it. What was all the? What was the thing? It would playing? be. It would be cool. It would be cool if um, they what? did the uh, the deal where uh, Roman comes out and goes Bray Wyatt acknowledge him. That would get a huge pop. Yeah, that but would again, be cool. He's a acknowledge Funk. No, he'll be. He'll look down on the ground. And he'll go Bray Wyatt acknowledge me. Oh wait, <laughs> that's too mm-hmm. soon. That's too soon. Oh, that's yeah. too soon. That's too soon. Maybe it's um, maybe heel shouldn't be considered or should think about, hey, instead of trying to be like popular with people, I should say something that actually gets me heat. You know, I feel like nowadays that's cheap heat, though, that's cheap. No, heat. no, it's not cheap heat. People who say that's cheap heat are literally people who get worked all I the think time. Cheap, cheap, oh, that's heat cheap is heat. like cheap heat would be like, you know, you go you go to the Spurs arena, and you go fuck the Spurs. Boo. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's no, cheap. No, 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 that's not, not, cheap heat is fuck, not. Fuck, fuck no, this cheap town. heat, Boo. Cheap so heat is not, is not being. Cheap heat would literally be, yeah, like what Gargut said. It's not cheap to, to basically say something controversial and be like, hey, I'm going to do a promo on Br- Bray's death and mm-hmm. get people not to like me. If that's a cheap heat, then I don't know. It, like, it's not very cheap because the price that you're paying for is. Basically, people hating you. But it's the, it's the day then, after you died, bro. Back then yeah, in the 80s and you know? the 90s, people would say it, but now they can't say it because everybody's going to cry their fucking eyes out. But, dude, but it then was the day go, after he died. Real heels. I miss real heels. We need my counsel <laughs> on this. <laughs> what are you going to say? I know. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> and then Joe's got to pretend that he's understanding what he's saying. You no, know, yeah, buddy. No, I agree. Yeah. Bray Wyatt, uh, rest in peace. Heard that. And then he goes, "Fuck you." That's my favorite part. <laughs> he sounded more like Asian there. Fuck you. He looks. Why does fucking Sunny? <laughs> Sunny looks Sunny like he's a monk or something. Bro. Sunny looks like she's like fucking. Baby, what is it? What's it called? Uh, that stupid show, the fucking fat kid. Uh, baby, it looks like her mom. Yeah, that one. Honey Boo Boo. Yeah, it looks like her mom now. Sunny looks like Honey Boo Boo's mom. I was gonna say Bro, Mosul looks like a female Donald Trump in uh, prison uh, attire, but that's just me. Sunny looks like a big fat ugly bitch. <laughs> that's about it. Hey, hey, you can still Skype her right now. Oh my god, a... her boyfriend is in charge of that right now. It's insane. Imagine Imagine if boy... your She's got a boyfriend? Mr. Yeah. Pico, I just got a message. I just got a message. I just got a message from a girl, so. Yeah, you're late. Doing all right. All right. Hell yeah. Good for you. Okay, and tell her. What's, tell your, gotta... what's your sex life? What's your sex life? Looking through the window of fucking Adam and Eve with your dick in your hand? <laughs> What am I fucking Luis Alejandro? <laughs> no, I'm talking. I'm talking of Mr. Pico. Oh, <laughs> he he apparently drives to Adam and Eve to do the show. Oh, dude, Adam and Eve. They still have those shops. Oh my god. Oh, he's at the store right now. He can't talk. 
He's no, buying a dildo no. collection. Nah, Dork Knight's got that one he talked to. That day he was at Bucky's and trying to fucking like talk to those girls. <laughs> Damn, we need to do Bucky's. Take him. That was the night Luke know. was crying about like his life. You're vi- you're glitching out completely, buddy. Ooh. Uh your 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 fucking internet is dollar store internet right now. There's something wrong with your internet. I think there's a problem with your internet. Mm. I just checked my internet. It's fine. I think there's a problem with your internet. <laughs> Dude, there was this one time where I got Luis Alejandro <laughs> like that. And I was like, I can't fucking hear you. I can't fucking hear you. I can't fucking... He fucking restarted his internet like several times. And I'm just there dying <laughs> laughing by myself. A match has been announced for SmackDown tomorrow. That's what I'm... What would you say, buddy? A match has been announced for SmackDown tomorrow. What is it? Oh. Zelina Vega will challenge EO Sky for the women's title. Oh, so EO Sky is gonna win? Yeah. Yo, I just I just posted this in the uh, in the chat where EO Sky, some heckler in the crowd was like, "Go back to China," where she goes, "I'm from Japan, bitch." Hell yeah, I know, dude. EO Sky is a fucking damn. Go see John Cena. When did when did they become? Uh, are, is she still a heel? I have not been paying attention. Yeah, to her she is still a heel. She is still a heel. But people were cheering when she won. She's she just didn't want to see Bianca with the fucking belt anymore. Apparently, I mean, I didn't even want her to have the belt in the first place. But all right, dude, there's people that don't want to see Charlotte with the belt anymore. Never. Yeah, that's true. Like, dude, Charlotte doesn't even talk play. anymore. She doesn't do promos. She just goes out there and like a robot, and then just leaves. I haven't heard her talk or do anything in a minute. Maybe I've been missing her. But... Divorcing Andrade. I don't know. I like. I like. I like Charlotte. I think she looks sexy. Which a lot of people don't think, but lately she's been doing a lot of bikini shoots and stuff like that and showing off her ass. So, I don't she mind got an her. ass now. Every time she like turns towards the or like her ass is facing the camera, and you see like her stance, you're like, oh yeah, she's Ric Flair's fucking daughter. She looks like Ric yeah. Flair from the back. Yeah, no yeah, ass. Yeah. She worked on her body like over the years because she didn't used to look like she looks now. She used to be more voluptuous. Now she looks. Now she looks more she skinny. She used to look like a meth head, I think. Like she, she had Damn. like a rib cage and, and a flat ass before. Now she's got some that, tone. that SummerSlam she had against, um, where she was in the triple threat or whatever, with uh Charlotte. No, yeah, it was Charlotte versus Becky versus Carmella, and Charlotte won, and Becky mm-hmm. turned on her. She looked pretty fucking good, and she looked a lot thicker. Now she's like so skinny, but. It feels she like she's gotten yeah, worked she's on on her tits and her boob or on her, boot, yeah, or on her ass. So, so, like, like, she's toned it down, but like, at least she doesn't look like she's sickly, like she used to look, kind of. Oh look yeah, when she came back she in, looks. when she came back in 2021 after she uh, missed WrestleMania 37, and she came back and she was wearing this like really sexy looking dress, but she was as skinny as a twig. Oh, dude, real quick though. Uh, when Dork Knight was here, remember <laughs> Luke was fucking pointing this out. He, so I was like, "Who the fuck gets COVID in 2023?" And he goes, "You don't watch CNN." <laughs> and then it turns <laughs> out that Dork Knight didn't even watch CNN. He just saw it on a tweet or something. That his yeah, yeah. He goes, "You don't watch <laughs> CNN." And I'm like, "Oh, oh well, you do. Why do you watch CNN? It's all fake news anyway." It was like, "Yeah, I know." I don't really watch it. My I, my friend watches it, and he let me know. So it's like you're getting on guard. Now. It's like you fucking asshole. You don't watch CNN. Neither do I. <laughs> I saw it on an advertisement. <laughs> and like earlier, he thought that he thought that I was crying about about Bray Wyatt's death because Mr. Pico sent him a picture of me from, from a like month ago. ago. He sent me. Yeah. yeah, he sent him a picture of me, and then. And the same message thread or whatever, he said, oh, Bray Wyatt died. So this fucking buffoon idiot thought I sent him this message. And he goes, you're a fucking pussy for for crying over uh, Bray Wyatt's death. And I'm like, I never said that. Meanwhile, literally two minutes later, he's saying, yeah, when I found out the news about Bray, I, I kind of broke down. Yeah. Are you fucking, you just called me a pussy. <laughs> I was like, dude, this guy is fucking hilariously drunk right now. I love no, he's it. stupid. He's not drunk. He was he stoned stupid. out of his mind. 
AEW was gonna oh. miss out on any live kind of uh, tribute to Bray because Rampage and Collision are taped. Yeah, they are taped. Uh, I didn't even know yeah. Collision was taped. Is Collision always taped? Because yeah. I saw. No, no it's because I... they're fighting in England on Sunday. Uh, oh yeah! By yeah, the way, I, I just wanted to bring this. I just Punk wanted to bring this up because Gary Funk after the show. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I saw, saw that. that. I wanted to bring this up to Miss uh, to TSS too because I saw him in the comment or the chat a few days ago, and we were talking about NXT or whatever, uh, and how like a how NXT tried to cock block AEW by putting by starting their show on Wednesday. I don't understand why AEW fans don't realize that NXT was a Wednesday show for literally years before AEW was ever a thing. Well, yeah, they were I know on that this Wednesday website. for a minute, and then it went. They no, no, the they were they were Wednesday for a long time. For a very what? long time, they were a Wednesday show. Then AEW got announced, and on a Wednesday, which oh, is like right. so funny. So it's well, and yeah, then it's like think they, about think about were... it. This, Think about it like this. Literally every AEW show now that's been made correlates with a WWE show that's going on or correlates on the same day that WWE has pay-per-views. AEW was saying, supposed to be AEW was supposed to be on a Tuesday. Remember it was going to be uh, originally originally TNT yeah in, TNT? in the blueprint. Yeah, it was supposed TNT. to be Tuesday night dynamite. Yeah. On TNT and I was and like then, that's, uh, that's a got a good yeah. ring to it. TND on TNT. Right. All right. Like, you know, this is, I know day. this was random to bring up, but it was just like it was bothering me for the past few days because I was thinking about it and I haven't gotten the chance to say anything on the show. Uh, gotcha. So, yeah, yeah. But Luke, you it. also know that like when when originally NXT was featured, it was on the website and it was never necessarily released other than just the website. But then when AEW was announced for Wednesdays, eventually NXT went head to head with them. And got their asses kicked. I mean, they're not all the time, but in the beginning, it was still. Neck but it's and neck fucked and up that not, people. Not. It's fucked up that people think, oh well, WWE tried to cock block them. But it's like, yeah, but AEW didn't by fucking taking their Wednesday spot. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm, still, right. and it's also like, the AEW then puts Rampage on Fridays when SmackDown's been on Fridays for years, and then puts Collision on Saturdays when WWE's been using Saturdays for their pay-per-view nights for years. So it's like, I don't like when people mention when WWE does shit to them, but they never mention all the like the other times that AEW has done shit exactly like that. I personally you know I mean? miss SmackDown. I, I personally miss SmackDown being on Thursday nights. Because that was for me. My like only time to really like watch wrestling for a long that was time because right? it was it was yeah, it taped was, on it was taped it was taped but you know um, funny enough they did have a couple live Thursdays but very rarely yeah, over the years the internet when I first came on so we didn't know spoilers right and I think for no me, no it was taped it, up until like 2015 it was still taped on Tuesdays and I would be able to watch it uh, some guy from the the. <laughs> Some guy in the truck of, of WWE would post it in fast forward motion. So you'd be able to watch the entire show in like four oh, minutes. When they reported when they reported when Christian before lost it came title, out Randy, before it came and, out, like days in like 2011, I think it was, where Christian won the title against or and then Randy was so disheartened. And it was like, dude, it was the news of that came faster than the videotape of it airing on, you know, on TV. When I was a kid, honestly, it's funny you bring up that feud because it wasn't that situation, but it was like, I think it was the SmackDown after, um, either the SmackDown after or the SmackDown before Money in the Bank 2011. I remember being really excited to watch it, but I was like, oh shit, it's not on until fucking, you know, eight o'clock. But then I found a clip yeah. of Randy Orton cutting a promo that was clearly from that SmackDown. And I'm wondering, oh, my God, what the fuck? Am I missing it? Is it live? And it turns out, you know, they used to obviously somebody would like, I guess you would. um, pirate was it? It. They would. Yeah, they would pirate by uh, you by hacking into like the satellite feed. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. They would pirate this shit. But when I was a kid, I was swear I was like, "How the fuck is this even possible?" <laughs> like, not, well, no, I'm not it, thinking it that maybe they, the, the WWE yeah, I'm not realizing that they, that they that they fucking just record the shows. Yeah, and remember, YouTube was fairly new even at that time because it came out in 2005, and it was only in recent years, even like when Jericho came back 
right, uh, to WWE in 2007, people were posting the return, but they were also posting like what happened after the show. So you had a whole new stream you of fucking hit that chick in the face <laughs> in the parking lot. That was Sean's. That was Sean's wife. <laughs> it was Sean's wife. No, he, he, he didn't hit anybody in the wife. face. He didn't hit anyone in the face. A bitch tried to like attack him and spit on him or something, and he like pushed her. And he yells at the fucking security guards like, "Do your fucking job!" Oh, and that then was some a lady, yeah. And though. then some lady, Legit. some lady that's recording him goes, "Oh my god, yeah, he face. just hit a girl." Yeah, he just hit a girl. No, I didn't think he was a real asshole in real life, even Nobody, though he did nothing wrong. <laughs> You might have mentioned this already, but WWE has added a section on Peacock for Bray. Oh, what? damn. Damn, I got to watch it. <laughs> I'm forced to watch it now. Is it like called, best 10 the graveyard. berries? <laughs> Every time yeah, he had a it. fucking good match, he got berries. You really should just my, my... have a section called the section called the graveyard, and it's just like every dead wrestler. <laughs> And like their oh, best of no. matches. <laughs> My favorite match that he was ever in, and I think I might have said this before, it was uh, the Wyatts versus the uh, the Shield. Yeah, the Elimination line. Chamber 2014. So when oh, they thought, when oh, they oh, die this early, do they uh, become a legend already? He, That's what I want. Um, Are they going to call him a legend now? Yeah, he's already. They're going to call yeah, him he, a legend. Yeah, he was already. Gonna... A, yeah, he was already a legend when that character was already made. Period. Yeah, like even though he wasn't a success. Like in a way he was, but he wasn't the success that he could have been and that he should have been. But he's still like, you know, even if he hadn't died, he people would have remembered him for years. And um, yeah, he would have gone down in history. Well, yeah, I mean, he won the world title a number of times. He was, you know, active with a lot of the main storylines featured all over Raw and SmackDown. I mean, he had a great career. I mean, I, and I they seem to, to like that. And they seemed to even though despite what it looked like with their booking, they seem to give him a lot of trust because he had creative control with his character. To a large least... degree. And that's rare, even in this time period where, you know, when Vince was still technically head of creative, that was rare. But the fact that Vince saw something in Bray even early on, where he even said on the Stone Cold podcast that he thought that Bray had something, it was just that. You know, again, Vince wanted to kind of be part of the creative process. And I don't know if it was a strain on Bray, whether or not he wanted that. Um, is, it dude um, took the, is it dude that he, uh, you know, took the gimmick from, like, respectfully? Still alive? Waylon Mercy, yeah. Yeah. So I wonder what he's saying about he, this. Waylon Mercy was one of the puppets uh, that named one of the puppets. He probably Waylon. did it. And also, I mean, what, didn't he take some references from like Devil's Rejects or some of those Rob Zombie films? Cape Fear. All these, you know what? Now, 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 all you guys are exposing is the fact that Bray Wyatt ripped everybody off. Yeah, I'm what, glad he's not. But what supposed to do that? Do Scott Hall ripped off Starface? Like, I know. I'm fucking around. I'm fucking around. But isn't it funny though? Like, how many people did Bray Wyatt pay and uh, take inspiration from? But now everybody's thing is the shit on LA Night because he rips off The Rock. You know what I mean? Or yeah. Stone Cold. Yeah. 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 Both of them. Yeah. Well, you know. Rock, uh, yeah. But, dude, honestly, L.A. Knight, I mean, when he was Eli Drake, I mean, back then. I You can go back and watch the video. I watched one the other day, and I talked about this guy's like the Rock and Stone Cold mixed with some other vibe. And whatever. Yeah, is it Eli Drake, Drake in the impact. show Heroes? Is he he reminds ago. me. He reminds me. Okay, he's got. He's got the Rock's voice, but you can't help that. You literally has his voice. Like you can't just change your vo vocal cords. Mm -hmm. He has. I think his finisher is a little too f similar to Stone Cold, but it looks badass. So you know, I get it. And it also Absolute has a badass boop, name too. Boop, boop, boop. That move he took from Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose had that when he first came in, and he, they, oh, he, they, he had a different one. He had the headlock driver. That's like a modified version of it. And originally, Dean Ambrose had the headlock driver, which you could say he took from Alicia Fox, who was using that before him. Yeah, they outlawed. Jesus him. Christ, is Alicia Fox still alive? Alicia, Alicia Fox is still, still employed. Nobody uh, her. Alicia Fox is still employed with the WWE. I bet. Oh, and then if you look up, go, I and she still no, hasn't she, got in the shirt. She finally did get let go a little while back, right? I, I think. So I, yeah, Bray's she got let go. It was reported. Bray's yeah. mom was hot. But... I think Ali Alicia. Why did they let her gone... go? <laughs> Alicia Fox has been she gone a couple years. She seems so now. responsible. <laughs> I loved Alicia Fox's wild. Like you never know what she would do. Remember, I, mean, I like when they had her flipping out. She was out. tweaking. Yeah, Dude, I like she that. was like in love with fucking Wade Barrett. 
they had like a fling. She'd be like, oh, I'm going to fuck him and all that shit. And on Divas, really? you don't remember that shit? God damn it. Oh, Divas really? On Total Deep. Yeah. In Total Divas, she was just straight up saying that she's going to fuck Wade Barrett. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. To be honest, she's, you know what, though? That's... She was sexy as I thought she was sexy. And Joe, remember you played that interview of her where she's like getting interviewed by this guy who's like being weird, but she's like clearly blitzed and she's like whispering. She's like, oh, let's be quiet. Let's be secretive. Shh. <laughs> and she's yes. like, I do remember that. I do, yeah. Oh my god, that was great! Can you play that clip, please, because I haven't seen that in forever. <laughs> of Alicia, you can never find it. Yeah, where was it from again? I don't know. I mean, I would assume you have it. I'm, no, I'm guessing. I, mean, I just think you have every clip on. I hand. remember it, but it's like, I God, I don't remember exactly what it was from, but I remember it. Um, I, let I, me look. I, I want to tell everybody we got a little bit. I'm going to be on for a little bit longer. We're going to stay on a little bit longer, but um, tomorrow night we'll be live after SmackDown for a little bit. Um, Saturday night will be live for Monetize This, and then f- and then Sunday night will be live for AEW All In. Although Sunday is it happening at nighttime or the middle of the day? All In noon it starts at noon. Yeah, Dude, so s- noon for Central. So for cool. you, it'd be one. No, noon for pre-show. That's gonna be rough. It's gonna be an afternoon uh, Sunday night Sunday show. So we'll be live after AEW All In here. Um, and yeah, th- and appreciate everybody hitting the like button today. This is a big. Unfortunately, this is fucking terrible. It takes a goddamn tragedy to get an audience bigger than wrestlemania week i mean like what is going on out there um, hey joe let me look up the i'm looking up the alicia fox video right now okay and if i get it i'm gonna send it to you on uh discord so just you know keep a lookout sure joe i don't know if you saw it but wwe's added a section on peacock for bray they put a best of already I, someone said that earlier yeah. Yeah. yeah i thought someone was just saying that like but they were but no, no they no. really put up a best of already yeah, that's crazy, huh. man. That mean, that means that they had they had already known that something was bad. <laughs> oh no! Okay, so, oh my god! Oh, it's my so god. weird. Do you guys remember when Alicia Fox was in a fucking stable with Jinder Mahal? <laughs> no, but that sounds terrible. That sounds just yeah. That sounds bad. Jinder Mahal tries to help Alicia Fox find inner peace. <laughs> Nice. Diamond Dallas Page tweeted out, just heard about Bray. So everybody's like finding out and everything. And some people are in on flights. Some people are landing on planes, landing like on, oh, they're landing on runways, hopefully. But AEW um, won't be able to do anything live because <laughs> they're taped. Yeah, they're taped. This right, place. right. So they'll just look wicked <laughs> awkward. Dude, Wait. there's one, there's one thumbnail, there's one thumbnail that. <laughs> That where she's like, you know, doing some crazy ass promo, and the title goes crazy like a fox. Oh my god! <laughs> no, it was super annoying. Then, uh, I feel like it was super annoying. And at then the there's time. another one where she's ranting about the the Bellas and Seth Rollins, and says uh, the WWE ruined her. Well, that part might be true, but I think mm-hmm. I, I think for every she had a bunch of freakouts that were like annoying and they, and they didn't work out. But there was once in a while, like one out of five or one out of four. She would do a freak out and it would be actually really hilarious. I don't know why. But it'd be really sexy. I'm just like, oh yeah. Fuck I think that Whitney. interview was in 2012, right? It was what? Really months. that far back? I would have never It had because it, it was when WWE was still using the scratch logo for their um thing. Okay. I don't remember. Twenty It was before they went to the network logo. Ugh. The fucking I can't fucking, fucking find this video and I'm pissed off because it was so hilarious and it will just it will forever be gone. The Calhoun just released a, a literal video flyby of a drone flying into the Calhoun in Boston, uh, flying around like crazy for the first time in 73 years. It's a fly through tour of the wedding that closed the Calhoun to the public for the first time in 73 years. Dude, that's how, wow. like, what is wrong with us? We really love this place, the Kowloon. Oh, they, Joe, I found it. Yes. Oh, you did? What year is it? I think, okay. So I found part two. I'm going to see if I can find the part one. But <laughs> Dude, Trump's, <laughs> have you seen Trump's mugshot, Luke? Yeah, yeah I, I have. Mean, he he looks ridiculous. much. But dude, is it no ridiculous than anything else he's ever taken in the past, like, year or two? I know, no, but time, he's, man. like, he's, like, looking, dude, I'm just, he's looking down and, like, up. Like it is he, like and he's he looks like, like Rudy. He looks like he's got the same mugshot as Rudy. It's really yeah. like it's it's almost he doesn't even look like Trump kinda. 
He looks like he's frowning, but looking up, like, I'll fucking kill you for doing this. Like, I'm going to kill allegedly, you. Allegedly, Rolling Stone is going to have that <laughs> as their cover at some point. Oh, I bet they do. Well, the, Rolling Stone loves covers. They put terrorists that kill children on their cover. They love that. Dick, is true. They love that. that is true. I hate Rolling Stone. I hope the whole building. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but no. <laughs> the whole uh, building. <laughs> But yeah, no, Trump, and you know, the weird thing is, on the left side of Trump's face, or I guess that'd be his right side of his face, it looks like airbrushed, like he's younger, but then the left side of his face, or the right side to us, is like really wrinkly. You notice that? Look at the face. Like, the one side, it's like... He forgot to put his makeup on. He forgot on to put one, his... Uh... It's very weird. Like, it's, he's like, but he's like, man, he's like, man, he's like, that, bro, that face is crazy. All, all the lawyers are smiling weird. Like, one of the lawyers is smiling, one of the lawyers is just staring, most of them are just staring, some of them are smiling, but this is a different type of stare. This is like a, I, when I, like, I will kill you, I'll remember the cameraman, I'll kill everyone. I'll remember your name, I'll find out where you work. It's not really Trump, yeah, you think they took him and they're gonna clone Trump? And he'll, dude, it, what, if they, what if they take him, no, they're like seriously, the what if they take him and clone him, and then he comes out and says... I've agreed to the rules of uh, the pardon agreement that I will not run. I cannot run for president, but it will remove jail time. So that's the way it goes. Bless America. Good luck. And that's it. And you're like, what? And so it's not really Trump. It's a clone. Dude, they can do stuff with like the dictator. Have like you ever seen the Mission Impossible movie? mask? In real life now, we have that unbelievable mask. masks that you can put <laughs> over somebody and then mm -hmm. rip off. Dude, it's crazy. It's just like in Mission Impossible in the movie when they rip the mask off and it's not them. It's so easy to do, and it's way easier to do it with older people. So like, yeah, there was there was a bunch of uh, bank robbers a few years ago using those Hollywood masks. Really? <laughs> they I just were, sent you yeah. a like Point Break. It does. It looks like an album cover. And I'm I'm not try, I'm not going to get into politics during a Bray Wyatt thing about like what's right and wrong and who's left and right and sides and that. We're just having fun that this that this did come out tonight and. Uh, yeah, yeah. No one's trying to get political, but um, how the fuck do you not realize that this only does any does good for Trump? Like this is only good publicity like, for Trump probably. supporters. Like they're gonna just think of him as a hero. I mean, like, why I does that look, is what that do you call this album? Or is that an AI fucking mugshot? It is. Anyways, dude, this is, it looks video. strange. I sent you the video. All right, let me go it look up this from Jim Barcelona. This video, this mugshot is cr is bizarre looking. I don't know, like it's this is very mugshot? strange. Dude, it looks like he got fucking punched in the left eye. That's what I'm saying. This is his mugshot. This is Trump's mugshot. He looks like he's like, I'll fucking kill you, Luke. Say, Luke, do a Trump voice and say that I'll I'll kill every last person in this building that has anything to do with this photo. You know what? Nova Annex does a better one than me, but um, yeah, Nova Annex. I'll kill every single one of you. I don't give a damn who you are. I'll kill you. And rape you and put my hands <laughs> in your pussy. All right, we it found the matter. Shot. This is AI. That's the I thing I want to know about is why, why was I even arrested for this? You know, <laughs> here's the thing. What if I told you that? What if I told you that Trump did 9/11? Maybe you're not ready here's for that thing. news. What if I even? What if I told you why the hell are we focusing on this? Oh, we're gonna arrest Trump when we should arrest Alicia Fox for causing 9/11. <laughs> All right, Alicia, let's see what she does here. She was like seven. Talented. You got to turn up the video because that's he's whispering to her. WWE's that's the funny wrestler. This is this is creepy. Oh. That's right. I said Go back a few seconds. But WWE diva Alicia Fox, the beautiful and talented Alicia Fox. One of WWE's most improved wrestlers. That's right. I said wrestlers, not sports entertainers, but sports entertainers too. Your work in the ring is really. I thought oh, has improved stop. and it's really getting better. So that's yeah. very good. I hope you get more matches. Anyway, there you go. There's the there's the the positive impact that I'm getting. All right. So Alicia, you're here today speaking to the students about yes. WWE a star. You've done this before. Yes. I know. So this is something that you're Dude, I feel like a girl's gone wild is about to happen. Like she's about to get <laughs> no, naked or yeah. whatever. Like what is going yeah, on? Like, she's like about to have a shit wild party a girl shot on her forehead. Just get like, on the this bus. This is a green room type interview. Yeah, Look, this is a green get room on the, on the, the bus party and show bus. Show me your pussy. Yeah, this is With your friends. This is right out of And I like how she's like yes. I was like awesome. Shit. This it, this nobody is <laughs> is complimenting me. What is I'm going on here? How far apart how far apart her eyes are. Wow. 
This guy's got a fucking interview of everybody. Like, I was looking through it. He's got an interview with Roman Reigns, Charlotte Flair, before they became big and shit. Mm. Like, like when they were still in developmental. Like, he had all those interviews. He had one with Triple H when he just cut his hair. Does he whisper he to like, them, too? Does he whisper to everybody? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but it, this one was so creepy. I think because he read the room. Either he was fucking this girl. Like, either him and, him and Alicia Fox were banging or something. Or, like, Alicia was drunk as hell, and he kind of read the vibe. Okay. She was drunk? I thought she was on pills. She looks... She, oh, she come on. She is definitely some sort of inebriated. I like, love no her way. crazy. I do. I love her crazy. I can make a song called I Love Your Crazy. <laughs> Look at her face while she... <laughs> Yeah, it's hot. Dude, she just she looks, looks completely looks I love her. I love Alicia Fox. I don't care. Her belly button, dude, I don't put my tongue in it. What is it about coming to a school like this that. and talking to the students? Oh, she's so cute. About anti-bullying. Mm -hmm. Well, today was a really great day because, like, the students of this Miami area seem to already be equipped with the tools to combat bullying. However, it was really great for us to spend our time here in the community because also being Floridian, like... Um, community is really important. Point of view, the volume is all the way up, by the way. Yeah. And community is really important to me, and community is really important to WWE, so it's good to always, like, give back, you know? They, because these people come and pay a ticket, and buy a ticket. This is so, so awkward. Dude, it's I can't even hear her. She's like, oh, I just want to show me my pussy. Because this guy is whispering to her, like, for whatever reason, yeah. he's like, oh, we gotta be quiet. Well, I can hear the camera noise over everything. Like, that's how crazy it is. And you're talking over it, too, so that's the other problem. Well, I mean, we waited for, like, 20 seconds. I'm just going to before we started talking. Now, what's going to happen in this video? What's coming up next? Is there something else that happened? No, that was it. No, no. I just remember you playing this years ago, and you were laughing so fucking hard because, like, it, it sounded like a green room interview. Yeah, it's like, and like get on the clearly, bus. And clearly throughout the video, like, you can tell that Alicia is, like, inebriated. <laughs> Oh. And she's at a WWE press event. <laughs> Just I'll come on the bus. I'll do whatever you want. Like, you tell me. Like, yeah, it's very bizarre. And very isn't strange. it crazy? Like, it, there's so many times where, like, I feel like, you know, there's been video of Alicia Fox clearly being drunk or, right. like, on pills or something. And it took the WWE, like, 10 years to fire her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no, I love it. She, she was using shirt. I'm just mad something crazy. I'm, I'm mad she didn't do something crazy to get fired. That's what I'm mad about. Like, don't, like, I was like, Remember when she used to come out with the sailor hat? Like, with yes. the captain oh sailor hat? Oh, my God. That was at the end. Like, dude, oh. that was great. Bro. And then, like, at, that she was the take, same like, time Jamie that I was. hat? I remember that. Yeah, you, she used to get mad at, um, I think she got in an argument, or not an argument, like in a kayfabe argument with, uh, Kyrie Sane, because Kyrie Sane was the pirate and, like, you know, fucking Alicia Fox was mm. the was the yacht captain. <laughs> I don't oh know. my god! <laughs> I think Alicia Fox just found a hat and put it on that day, and she's like, "This is my new gimmick. I'm a captain." <laughs> <laughs> she had nothing else going for her, right, dude? She, she, yeah, she earlier in an angle where she was trying to get with Cedric Alexander. That's how big of. She was. Tell she me. was an angle where she was giving people wedgies and and uh -huh. pouring soda on them. Earlier, I sure. did a, um, I put up on Twitter a little clip of the RVD AJ Styles commentary I did, but in, what I noticed in it, I noticed something. This is one of the best Pele's I've ever seen. Watch, watch what, watch this RVD, watch this. I just think this is one of the best ones I've ever seen. Double leg scissor roll up in it. Oh, RVD spinning heel kick this. The Pele kick! Oh my God! RVD trying to avoid it. One, two. Is that not the best? You know, I, I, I always best? think that AJ Styles has the best Pele kick because he actually does a belly flop. Uh, if you do look at, at other see people's it? Pele kicks, like Finn Balor, he yeah. lands on his back. And I'm like, why? Really? Like, fucking well, great. Also, yeah, like, it, it was like, oh, it was like, boom. Well, also, he I just him. like the way that his Beautiful. whole body rotates, like in air. Yeah. And, he, yeah. and it really looks like he sticks that landing. Like, it looks devastating. Other people hit a Pele kick or a, or a you know an Insiguri, and it looks like it barely grazes the guy. This <laughs> this one right there. Oof, boom, no, dude, that, that, that that's nasty. Good. That's that RVD great. getting kicked for real. Put that on uh, title RVD match wrestling on YouTube. Yeah, it was you a good know, Pele kick. Dude, the Pele's are great, dude, but I don't like the Finn Balor ones. Those he just lands oh, on I his don't back, like... 
and uh, he just kicks you in the face. And I'm like, mm. and I go, Pele kick. And I'm like, uh, start not to like a... Finn. Maybe start not like to like Finn's rotate. matches. Finn's I... matches lately have just have, I don't know, they feel all so formulaic, like, not formulaic, <clears> but <throat> it, it's just them doing moves and then nothing really, um, you know. What the fuck is it? Oh, stop! Uh, your YouTube kids is playing again. Best Pele's I've ever seen. Watch, 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 watch <laughs> what? The what, a, what a fucking idiot. Stop. Anyway, um, listen. Let's. I don't know what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, um, I love everybody. And, uh, <laughs> we gotta go. I gotta get off the air. Yeah. yeah. I'm. Hey, Joe. Yo. Hey, Joe. Seriously, let's bury the hatchet. Uh, and I'm sorry for fighting with you. And uh, you know. Uh, sorry that Bray Wyatt died. I guess. Oh, I think it's somehow it's your fault. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, yeah, uh, fucking uh, past fucking four hours. <laughs> yeah, I know we've been live a while about this. Hey, Garguts, man, I love you. Maybe Garguts will go live. Check him out. Uh, Jesse was here. Barely got to talk to him at all. Mr. Pico, thanks for all the info today, Mr. Pico. You're the best. Novanix, what's up? Rustafa, sorry I muted you, but uh, you were playing some weird shit in the background. Uh, I couldn't deal with. And, Just make uh, sure you unmute them. <clears throat> yeah, we'll be here. To, I'll be here on tomorrow night. Don't know if I'll jump on Discord, but I'll be on tomorrow night myself. And uh, Saturday night will be uh, monetize this. Saturday night right here will be crazy. And um, Joe, just make sure you remember to unmute Rostafa before you. I just, no, I just unmuted him now. I don't so know what happened. Like, okay, you know what happened because yeah, he he got stuck one no, time for like weeks. I know, and he lost it. He snapped. <laughs> yeah, he was messaging everybody. <laughs> it's Please fucking bullshit. Tell me why. Everybody does that. It Everybody happens. does that. I get it. I mean, it I, I, mean I, I got in a fight I'm with Joe like about it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it was a, it's it was a perfect white. storm of a lot of things. <laughs> I was I'm also having white. a real I, – I didn't say it the other day because I didn't want to give an excuse, but – it was it was a perfect storm last week. I was also having a real bad day, but it was it was just really wasn't that no, big a I, deal. No, Joe. Listen, I figured that you were like because I think a lot of people on the call could tell like you were co- sort of annoyed before the show even started, mm. or like you know while you were starting the show. But more, that whole thing. So now maybe the other thing, maybe monetize honestly, this will be up in time. I didn't, I should have phrased it better when I said you were blowing up my phone. I didn't mean it like that, like, oh, you're annoying me because you're texting me. I was annoyed with what I perceived as, like, an attitude. Like, I thought you were bitching at me, like, why did you bring this up? That's what no. I was getting at. So that's what I take. Listen, I, don't talk I think like, me and you are so Vince similar talks. because we just get in our own heads and we fixate on things, and then we just end up being like, oh, yeah, I don't even know why God, I got like that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe could be why. I, I just, but yeah, it wasn't that big a deal to, really to me. It sounded like it was, but but I did have to. Uh, so monetize this might be up. Last week's might be up by this week's. I don't know. It takes a while to edit. It's been like eight days. Every and the every N-word time thing, I edit. the N word thing was uh was just a sh- well shock value. Well, but I, I think should have realized that think, shock value is at the uh, is out the window. Well, it is. You for, know, it's been out the window for a while. It is for YouTube because they'll they'll just destroy you. I love you guys. Good night. I'll see you. I appreciate it. We'll never get off the air if I don't just drop it. Discord, thank you for being there. Um, a thanks for making me laugh, bro. Hanging out on the Discord made me at least laugh. I've been sitting here like shocked and miserable all night long over this Bray Wyatt stuff. So at least I got to laugh with all you guys because I can't believe it's real, man. Bray Wyatt is gone at 36 after battling some kind of heart issue and then getting COVID and it making it really bad. And then thinking it looked like that he was going to come back. And then suddenly today having a heart attack, which my wife brought up to me earlier. She was like, it must have been a really bad heart attack to not, you know, bring him back from it. Or he was in a bad location or something like that. It's I don't know. I don't know where he was. I don't know the circumstances other than that information that we all know now. Um. Man, this the wrestling world is hurt bad from this. A, a massively creative guy who entertained the hell out of us for over 10 years comes from a wrestling family of just a wrestling lore of legend. Uh, you know, the, the blood that was in his body came from royalty, wrestling royalty, to, to no, no doubt it formed a guy like Bray Wyatt because... Look at the people that birthed him, you know, and his family lineage. So very sad for everybody. Awful news. 
And um, that's it, man. I hope you guys, uh, I don't know. I'll see you tomorrow for SmackDown Live Review and other things. Saturday night and all in in the middle of the day. I mean, it's a big, crazy week, and it's puts a hell of a damper on it, and I don't know what SmackDown's going to do tomorrow, but we'll uh, find out, I guess. All right. I'll see you guys um I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Blown away. Good night everyone. Thanks to everybody who subbed, liked, liked the video down below, commented, donated under these circumstances. Thank you and we will catch you later at Meta World Online, Twitter, Joe Cronin Show producer on Twitter. Instagram.com slash Joe Cronin Show, Facebook.com slash Joe Cronin Show, TikTok Joe Cronin Show, YouTube, and all that junk. Um, rest in peace to Bray Wyatt, to uh, Wyndham Rotunda, and crazy. I don't know if this is true. Apparently, Bray Wyatt made a video today, right before he he died today. But uh, I'm I'm gonna assume that's not real. Like I, I'm not even gonna get into that. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I don't think that's real. I wouldn't believe anything until you know what's really going on. You know. Since the dawn of those Rest in peace, Bray Wyatt. Mankind. You're a great man. To answer one simple question. Where do we go when we die? A man of science! What have you believed that we just become one with the earth? Nothing more. Hmm. And a man of faith! New subscriber. You, you fucking think mark! From a much, much different perspective. But what about those like you and I? We're special. For us, there is no death. This world is our hell. <laughs> this world is our hell. We don't belong here. I know you can hear me. But now my eyes are wide open and I don't fear you anymore. I pity you. It's time for you to go home. Find me! Him, uh, the Bray Wyatt and the, the Wyatt family music. That was the biggest thing that you weren't happy with. That wasn't the biggest thing. That's just what stood out most as, as peculiar, your opinion of the music. Because I happen to think it's it's one of it's, the best wrestling themes in decade. You know what? I listened to it in the car today. And yeah, it's not really, it's not country. It's just no. like, kind of, it's, it's actually like that somber alternative grunge. Exactly. So you see why I dig it. Exactly. I'm not the biggest grunge guy, but right, right. I think um, I think it's because I just I thought their promos were cheesy. I didn't take any of the stuff serious. Like it was just it was bizarre. Coming through, like he had a bunch of promos where or uh, vignettes where he was in camo face paint, talking about how he was going through the woods and was gonna find people and kill them or whatever, <laughs> shoot them with a crossbow like Shawn Michaels, whatever. 
Yeah. But, uh, and, you know, it's been a long time since we've seen promos like that. Um, usually it's just something like Brodus Clay before he came out as the Funkasaurus, where it just shows them wrecking house in the ring and black and white footage of them beating someone up and that's it. This yeah. is the first time where we have, like, a story we're supposed to believe in. It's almost like the return of the gimmick. Um, You're right, but they've yeah. been... Do- 